How you doing, mate? All good. Aye. All good. Yep. Thanks for coming up to the podcast. Glad to On be the podcast. Yeah, glad to be invited. My first one ever. First ever talking into a mic. Yeah, probably my last as well. This is you can now uh, you can now be like John Davies after all these years, man, <laughs> singing into a mic. You know, it, man. Right, yeah, Put some twist on. Getting these questions up, man. So, aye, what's been happening? Anything new? Ah, nothing, mate. Same old work, work, work. Train, train, train. That's it. How's the training going? Yeah. Well, the past month I've been kind of back powerlifting and back doing the kind of stuff I used to do with the same crew that I used to train with, which is good, man. Been good. All Feeling good. good. Yeah. I'm Feeling strong, better. even. Aye, it's what you can what you can do with a crew that's going places and are as motivated as you yeah. compared to just training yourself sometimes is totally night and day it's so has everybody everybody got goals that they're <coughs> pushing to now or yeah well they're all they've all still been competing the last couple of years and everyone's just going strength to strength and then i kind of took time out and time away to do other things and yeah i mean me and you have trained we've done deadlifts that time and yeah I mean, I was shocked the day, that day I pulled 220 kilo, whereas like, that used to be nothing to me. Aye, totally. I'd walk into a competition and that would still be warm-up room. Then that day I'd done 220 years. Like, well, fucking hell, that's still uh, maybe got a wee bit of strength there. But yep. then... Oh, just a wee bit. <laughs> now with them, it's like, again, I'm back at that stage where I'm like, play it on, play it on, yep. play it on. So what's your, uh, what's your numbers been recently? Ah, okay, it's... It's back to just Still percentage work, work. it's mm -hmm. sub-maximal stuff, so, yeah, I mean, my deadlift is, was always my weakest lift, so that one I'm trying to really bring back and just hammer the form and the technique and hopefully the strength will come with all that, so. Cool, I don't think I've really been over 200 kilo or so, but it's looking fast. Good, man. Fast. Well, as long as you're, uh, you're loving it again in that, then that's obviously the main thing, isn't it? Uh, and that you're really. getting something out of it. So obviously we'll talk more about your training and that as it comes on. First of all, obviously need to talk about how we met and that. So obviously <laughs> this goes back to school days, what, yeah. 12 years old or whatever. I, I remember, um, well, the first thing, I think the first point of contact was when I bought a Jacksonville Jaguar slasher hat off you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure <laughs> TJ, if anyone doesn't know, was the dealer of the slasher hats in school. As far as I can remember, it was definitely you that I bought it off anyway. Yeah, I was... <laughs> I, was, I had quite a few hats. I uh, still, obviously, as you not can quite see, a Jacksonville Jaguars that one, but uh, uh, I think there was a <laughs> Orlando, Orlando um, Pirates, something or another. Got a few as well. Uh, so, uh, uh, dealing the hats, it I like it. That was one holiday I went to Gran Canaria and I found this shop that sell all the fucking the basketball and baseball hats that all the young team were wearing. Make a mint off it. <laughs> I bought them in bulk and brought them home and then sell everybody stuff. Good times, mate, and. Yeah. Uh, I remember um, you were uh, sitting behind me. A modern studies, man. Modern studies. Modern yeah. studies. Two th when did we go to school? 2000? Uh, 2000. Mr. Gletley. Right, class. You and Ozzy. And then I think that's obviously how we started chatting that, but yeah. um, we kind of got into the same type of music now, I think. That's yeah. how we kind of really became mates, isn't it? Aye. First year, we were, everyone was fucking still trying to establish them still in high school, I think, and I kind of uh kind of ran with the young team i think <laughs> at the time I, I knew i didn't fan and yeah we all just we'd done stupid stuff when we were younger but towards kind of end of first year second year uh, i think we all kind of i think that's when everybody found them the yeah. right friends when but i like to say i think you know we all broke off and we all became marshals as pretty much know, uh, pretty much but i love a corn slipknot and blink 182 really wasn't it? oh mate I get a Slipknot tattoo the other week there, man. So he did. Okay, and yeah, I. But that's the best thing ever happened, really, because it, like you say, I think, what was there, about six or seven of us in that wee group? Totally, and, man. You know, we all fucking, all the gigs and the fucking the good times. Totally. It's weird. It's weird that you don't really think about it, man. Like, if if we never got into that crowd, if you ended up in a different crowd, what would your uh, life be? Where would, would you be now in life? It's really fucking strange, man. Like, if I never ended up getting into heavier music and assuming 
uh, I, sorry, I could ruin the friends that we did and started yeah. going to gigs. That's how we set off on that path in life Aye. of gigs and getting a bevy and all the rest yeah, of it. And I know. But with each other, obviously. Aye. It was, it was some fucking good old crazy times in there. But you, uh, you left school pretty, you left school before every day, I think, uh, I think. Fourth year, I think. Yeah, I end, left, of fourth year? end of fourth year. I had big plans to go to college and shit, and that didn't work out. I ended up, I think I started off saying I wanted to become a mechanic, and then I wanted to become a tattooist. And then I went to art school, and that was more just a fucking about period, I think. I mean, I was good at art, but... I don't think I was up to standard that would ever have made it anywhere. So. so what did you actually do after school? Well... I can't quite remember. I remember you were in college after, for a bit, but... After college, I then just went on a, a full-time job. I worked down in Dumbarton in a... Like an industrial supplier, like for... All kind of... Like civil engineering companies and whatnot. It was yep. literally supplied to Everton. And it was, it was good money for being... I think I was 16 at the time, 17. I was earning really good money and I, I enjoyed it. It was Monday to Friday and I could still have my weekends and I had money, even though I think was I getting paid like a couple hundred pounds a week, but back then you're like, fuck yes, man. Definitely, there was a lot of money back then for us as uh, kids, man. Do you know even when you're out drinking on a Friday, Saturday, still, you still had a fucking, you only spent about 50 quid or uh, something. Easy, aye. But uh, yeah, then after that, uh, my mum just bugged the fucking life out of me and said, no, you can't end up staying here in Dumbarton. Oh. So, my cousin had went to the army, so she thought I should go to the army, so my cousin said he enjoyed it, it was great, so I ended up signing up, and then they said, oh, you won't be in until like another year or something, because yep. the intake, and then next minute I got a phone call like a week later saying, oh, by the way, there's an intake, there's people dropped out, so if you want to start, I think it was like, I think it was like two weeks, and they said, Mental, man. what age were you? I was, I think I just turned 18 i think i turned 18 a week before i left cool so that was meant to Jeez, be man. like a year waiting a year to go in to right pack up your life Straight in two away. weeks and fuck off jesus and man so what was that like <coughs> the army i the basic training the 12-week basic training i fucking loved it loved every minute of it the the kind of brotherhood and yeah. the training and just everything you were learning in the physical aspect, you know, I was probably, I mean, I think when I joined, you have to do like a mile and a half uh, run. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, I think the, the standard, you need to beat 10.30. If you don't beat 10.30, then you're in like remedial training. So I think when I started, I think I did my first one, I was like 10 minutes 30 bang on. I was fucking, I've always been quite heavy, so running fucking sucks for me. And then... Did that count though? That was okay? Was that? You made it? Oh, I made it. Uh, that was fine. And then by like, I think they tested you at like the six week mark or or maybe they left it till like the 10th or 11th. By that point, I was running like fucking just over nine minutes, a mile and a half, like blitzing it okay. without even being bothered. And then I finished my 12 week basic, whereas you're not allowed to drink, you're not allowed to do it, you're basically in this, it's like a prison. Yeah. And then went into phase two where you can drink and all you do is drink. And by the time I went to phase two, they tested me again and I fucking Up failed it. it. <laughs> Jesus, man. Because I was a fucking, I was a bit of a drinker, so. So what was that? Like, you were still in yeah, a still, camp or something, but. We're still, basically your phase one, that's, that was to train you to become a soldier. Like, all your basic, like, yep. shooting and fucking out in the, the fucking, the field stuff. And then my phase two was my actual, uh, like, you were an apprentice. That was, it was going to become a vehicle mechanic. And... Aye, that was good, but I think the fact that I was allowed out of the camp and, I don't know, just, were you were kind of out in the middle of nowhere in England. Yeah. So, at the same time, you were allowed out of the camp, but all that was around you was pubs and fucking shitty takeaways and there was just really nothing happening. So, that was what, I think it was like an hour outside London, maybe, and I'm thinking, I'm fucking... Guys would obviously go home at weekends, but I think I'm in Scotland. I can't go, I can't afford to go home every fucking weekend. Yeah, so. Uh, so, all you basically done, like Monday, Sunday, fucking Monday, you just drank and drank and drank and drank. And I don't know, it kind of took its toll on me. And then my, my granddad, he'd cancer at the time, so he got really quite sick. So, 
I think then a girl came into play as well. One of my exes, that kind of came into play. So that kind of swayed my mind into thinking, you know what, I think I'm going to pull out. And eventually I did. Right. I left. I think I lasted like three months in that camp. Because they, they put you on a uh, soldier waiting trade training because there's that many people coming in. Your course never actually started. Yeah. So we didn't do it. We just sat in the room and watched TV all day, <laughs> all day, <laughs> every day. And Sounds then, amazing. <laughs> know, it was fucking, it was always the music channels and it was, uh, what's that bastard's name? Is it Daniel Powder? You had a bad day. Ben, no, that's no Benfield. No, uh, it's remember the American oh, guy. Mate. So you had a bad day, booby doo doo. Don't remember. I can't remember. I think he's Daniel Powder or something. Is his name? That song played every fucking day. <laughs> so you do. Had a bad day. <laughs> I had a bad day. I had a bad day. So and I had a bad day. <laughs> it became the that, but the bad day was your life. Uh, so you done. You'd go for breakfast. You'd go up to the room. You'd sit there for a couple of hours. If they asked you to do it and you'd have to fucking do it. And then you went for your lunch, come back, sat in the room, and then you went for your dinner. And then the Naffy pub was like a pound a pint. God. And I think, I can't remember, like Monday or Tuesday or something was like fucking happy hour. So you were getting like two pints for a pound and fucking... Chaos. A year bomb was like a fucking penny. And aye, uh, it was just fucking... Before you knew it, you were Tuesday, you were like, I'm fucking steaming. And then you wake up Wednesday... Obviously, hangovers didn't really, they didn't really affect you that bad. Didn't you that much when you were no. younger, eh? So then no the Wednesday, you're like, oh, fucking, fuck this, man. I'm, no way I'm drinking tonight. And then next minute, you're, wink, oh, yeah. w- <laughs> but I think Wednesday night was fucking stripper night at one of the local bars, which was absolutely fucking horrific. And it's Sounds w- good. Oh, it was so, so bad. It was not like the strippers people were maybe used to. It was strippers as in this woman that's, Life's fucking beat it out of her, man. And God, she's fucking. She'd do a routine and then walk around with a pint glass asking for money. And if you didn't want to give money, obviously you didn't. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not really one for strippers, so I was never, I never gave her money. And no, I think it was one of the one times I did go. The woman that actually had water in a turkey baster and put up her ass and squeezed all the water in and then farted it all out. <laughs> In the middle of the floor, where all these guys were standing with pints <laughs> looking. Oh my god, man. And at that point, we looked down and there was like pebble dash all over the fucking floor. And our table. Hell, man. And I was just like, it's a Wednesday night. <laughs> <laughs> it's Wednesday? Why am I fucking here what watching this shit? Oh, it was, yeah, it was Well, I like horrific. it, mate, where, uh, I don't know, what's that, it's 11 minutes in? Mm. And it's the most explicit one yet. I like <laughs> it, man, I like it. We always knew that was going to happen with me. So what happened after that, man? Was that you back just looking for work and stuff? Uh, I well, I'd, I mean, it was a kind of, I can't remember, it took a while to get out. But at that point, I kind of, I'd start travelling back home more often. And I mean, I'd fucking, I think at that point I was taking, like, guys I knew. I was borrowing their cars, like, little sheds on wheels. Like, I think one was a Citroen X. I drove it from the bottom of England to Scotland. And then when I was going back down, I thought, you know what, I better check the engine, just check the oil in this. Things a bit fucking dodgy. Opened the, the bonnet of the, the car and it was just like, just this big thing of rust. And I was like, oh my fucking God. <laughs> I'm driving a death trap like 700 miles. Fucking okay, yeah. hell. And uh, I basically just shipped all my stuff up slowly. And then eventually I get my papers to sign out. And then I come home, that was 2006, I think I come home. And again, the part I didn't think about getting out was my mum being on my fucking case again. So that was, that was her. So I had to get a fucking job, get a job. And I ended up being a bus driver, which was, yeah, I'll go to prison before I go back to driving buses. Not a so, fan? No, nah, a fucking, me and public relations just, no. Nah. There's probably too many to talk about, but tell me one really good story about being a bus driver. What something that happened? Eh... Uh, like something you've done, because I'm pretty sure oh, well, you've done a few f- ah, well, mad the, things with some mad passengers. There was obviously the rule, you'd def- you've you obviously got the protective screens and you were always told never get out of your cab. Uh, but um, 
I'm a person. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? You're a human with feelings. Aye. I'm not just uh Oh, thanks, driver. Uh, thanks. Yeah, and yeah. half the fucking bastards never even said thanks anyway. Totally, man. Fucking pricks. <laughs> but I, if anyone said anything about lying to me, I was out the cage. Yep. Yeah. Right, I'm out the cage. Hello. <laughs> and uh, most of the times things would change, but then obviously you'd a fucking young team in the junkies on, so a couple of times you'd end up with a couple of wee headlocks or a couple of wee rolling around sessions. One guy actually he was passed out in the bus and when I tried to wake him up, eventually got up and he tried to swing for me. So I grabbed him and then just launched him down the bus. Launched <laughs> him down the bus. <laughs> and then I chucked him off and then by the time I'd made it back to the depot, he'd try to phone the police on me. <laughs> <laughs> and so luckily I'd already phoned the depot yeah. and just told him that I've had a bit of a problem, guy tried to attack me and I've defended myself. So the police obviously seen the guy and went, ah, fucking, don't worry, we've seen the scumbag. Must so. get some amount of shit on those on drug oh, buses with the nutcases that got on sometimes, man. It's honestly... Must have been, that must have been obviously quite a, a grown job for you to like, I, be doing when you were getting shite. And yeah. Maybe like, oh, I mean, obviously I was a young guy and you're working with guys that are 40 and 50. I mean, I was earning, I was earning a lot of money for being 18, yeah. 19. I was earning good money, uh, and I'd done all the overtime under the sun, but at the same time, just the shit you need to put up with, it's, no one has to put up with that. Just think, I think people that work with the public in general are, demand a lot more respect than what they get, I think, because it's, it's fucking hellish. Aye, man, I mean, you must, you do sometimes see people like on that job, the bus drivers and that, and you think, fuck, what's the matter with you? But then you yeah. think, they Aye. probably have just been spat at or something like that, somebody's like you, fucking abused them. You look at all these guys and they're dour faced cunts, and you're thinking, <laughs> but there's a reason you're in that Aye. job. Your wife probably hates you. <laughs> fucking, you hate your job. You fucking hate everybody you work with, and you hate the people you're dealing with. So it's kind of, an amount of guys, I mean, I was obviously young, I had no commitments, I think I'd, I was paying a car up, but, You'd be in there and I'd be like, oh, I'm, I'd, be, I'd say like, I'm doing my two years and I'm, I'm getting to fuck. I'm not doing this job yeah. the rest of my life. And you'd get the old tans, oh fuck, I said that son, just a wee summer job. <laughs> Forty year later, I'm still here. And I'd be like, nah, fuck that. Aye. Sorry for you, you've fucking probably pensioned up to the hill. I Aye. said, I'm getting fuck all here. So now when I drive by these guys and all I heard when I was in the bus, he's like, oh, there's nothing. I mean, there's nothing out there. There's nothing out there. Can I, can, can I get a job? I've went from job to job to job to job. Like I've never been out of work. And I drive by these guys now and I see them and they're still dour faced and hating life. And I, the other time I see them, I'm like, are you still away first? Aye, aye, but something's coming up, something's coming up. But mate, big plans. I'm like, I fucking sure it is. You fucking lying prick. So your trucks now? Yeah. And how's that? All the shit is still in the back but it cannot talk to you, <laughs> and it cannot spit at you. But yeah, I've had a variety of truck jobs, whether it be long distance or yep. just local stuff, and I'm in a kind of local job now, which is Monday to Friday. I work seven to five. I'm earning more money doing, there's like class two and class one. The class two is like rigid lorries, and then the class one is the big articulated. Yep. Well, I earn a lot more money doing the class two than I do the class one, so. I've kind of found a wee niche in the market where it's good, man. Where it's good to me, so good. So obviously, big thing, biggest part of what we're going to talk about today is training and mm. lifting, and yeah. uh, you know, getting in the gym because I think that's what most people probably know you as, big Aye. TJ, because you're fucking massive and big people that, just that, people that just big tattooed cunt? Uh, uh, people that just. Tattooed. Uh, you know, think of it when they, when you say your name, like oh, fucking yeah. that guy's the fucking strongest cunt in the world, now. Like, <laughs> um, so I was at one point. take it, <laughs> <laughs> take it back to basically the start. And how did you get into the gym? Eh, uh, oh, I don't know. From a young age, I was always probably like most kids. Like I enjoyed the world's strongest man. It was on at uh, Christmas. Yep, loved that. And uh, I mean, I think kind of when I was younger, it was like. Pujanowski and all that, and you see these guys, and you're like, fuck me, like, that's, I want to look like that, that I, <laughs> I want to be that, Yeah. and, and I think, what did I do, 
I said to mum, I said, I want weights. So I ended up going to Argos and buying the, the usual. I think most kids had them, the the gold York plates. Uh, I've filled, got them the filled with cement. Literally yours. Oh, in fact, <laughs> <laughs> I gave you them. <laughs> that's how I started, man. Uh, that's how that's how, how I started, because you brought them up for me. Yeah, passing them down, eh? So I've still got them. Uh, I so I always remember it was Argos Clyde Bank and it just came in one big box and then the bar so I think it was like 50 kilos all in I remember carrying the box out of them oh you get a bar I'll fucking carry this myself what age were you? I must have been so still in school? yeah I must have been 14 or 15 at the time oh, okay. and uh, I remember carrying that box out I think I'm fucking solid by the way I'm fucking <laughs> <laughs> ain't nobody fuck with me after I do these uh, few, few bicep curls here I'm fucking I'm on to this <laughs> Uh, uh, then after that, kind of, when I went to the army, I'd done a lot, a lot of weight training, and then I kind of, I always remember when I went to my phase two, there was this big massive guy. He's always on gear and stuff. He probably he, the look of his body. I remember he was, he probably he probably was a powerlifter. He yeah. was yoked as hell, and him and his mate were just repping like three plates, which is like 140 kilo yeah. on the bench press. And I was kind of thinking. I mean, I looked all right back then. I was. <coughs> tall and lean and you know I wasn't massive I wasn't like thick the way I am now yeah. uh, and I just remember thinking like once I kind of realised I was drinking too much I kind of started thinking you know what while I'm down here I may as well throw myself into the gym a bit and me and a wee guy the up Aberdeen Billy me and him just used to train all the time and just do like but back then there wasn't you know there wasn't Instagram or Facebook or anything there wasn't really anything so Totally, man. I sound old as fuck, man. I sound like man, Arnold. You're right, man. Uh, I sound like Arnold talking back to the 70s, though. We didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so different, but, man. Uh, I so you just kind of, you done stuff until you, oh, fuck, I can't do that anymore. It was just done loads of, well, obviously back then, you just done loads of chest and biceps, thinking biceps will make your arms bigger when you soon realise they don't. Uh, yeah. And just remember thinking there, like, fucking... So I, just, I was still in the army. I was still in the army. Yeah. I just remember I had such a buzz for it. And I remember the guys always slagging me. Like, oh, you sh- sh-. I think a couple of times I had like vests on or like cut off sleeves. And I was always quite lean, so I was always looked decently yeah. in shape. Yeah. And guys were like, oh, you're a fucking, you used to look a prick in now, you're a fucking arrogant cunt. So the more I kind of thought, I'm like, eh, you know what, I actually quite like, I really enjoy this. So when I came back, I joined the Meadow Centre in Dumbarton, which... Now when I think back on it, it was a fucking hellhole. <laughs> but and me and our mutual friend from high school, Craig Murray, Mint it. Shout out to Mint it. Uh, maybe maybe he will listen to this. Who knows? Hopefully. Uh, me and him just started training together kind of more often in the Meadow Centre, just doing total bro stuff like chest Monday to Friday and fucking, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Doing, doing the odd That's stuff. how you got that good chest, man, uh, like fucking every day. Like, back then, you just, oh, God, it's embarrassing even thinking like you're putting 100 kilo on the bench and like getting to there and then he was pulling up and you're like oh man I feel pretty strong after that. <laughs> feeling pretty good after that mate and the fact you're even trying 100 kilos oh, back then man I still can't oh, do it it's fucking stupid and then doing doing the odd squats and that and probably not even going anywhere near parallel <laughs> thinking once again putting 100 plus in the bar and going down and going oh mate I'm feeling strong this again. was all you Doing it off your own back, yeah, aye, aye, like, like no said, fucking still, help or advice. In. Still back then, I think there was Bebo or something, but MySpace. Uh, but yeah, I don't aye. think that was in geared towards. Yeah, well, I was. What like, Facebook? After I joined MySpace. Just I think I, the only reason I joined MySpace was to speak to you again. I, I hadn't spoke to you in years. I um, kind of fell, I fell away with you for a few, yeah. for a few years when I moved up to Glasgow. Aye. But I think pretty much since I've been fourteen or fifteen, I've just I don't know. There's just been an obsession in me. So you've consistently trained since then? Oh, pretty much, oh 100%. Like so I've, is that 15 years, 16 years? Yeah, easily. It's epic, man. Obviously, I've went home and stuff and took breaks, but I've not continued <laughs> to train for the past... Chest for the last 16 <laughs> years? Trained train chest for the past 16 years, but... Uh, yeah, just... It's it's in my blood. Like, so, I'll never not train. So how... What did it do for you when, obviously, you said it made you feel amazing and stuff, but obviously when you were 18 and that, I'm pretty sure that your your pals and you were always, you're maybe going out getting pissed. Aye. And there was a, 
if you're what to be consistent at that, that must have been something that could have potentially hold, held you back. So yeah. how how did it? Obviously, you you ended up making a life with it, yeah. you know, and competing uh, or yeah. it. But like, how did it change your life? Basically, when you started, what did it? What did it give you? What did it? What did it do to you? I so think, that you did keep at it and yeah. take it to the next level. I think it's like how many young people would have went like that, yeah. but fucking sacked it off or uh, never went back. I think in the Meadow Centre days when it was me and Craig. I mean, you're young guys. You could drink and you know what I'm saying. There was no hangovers and you ate crap. I mean, I had I had no form of diet. I just wanted to put weight on. So I'd just wanted to get big. I'd I think I'd tubs that size, like just full of pasta, and I'd be eating dishes of pasta every day with the odd bit of chicken thrown in. Wow, yeah. life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was brilliant back then, and, I, and I'd never, I mean, for me to put weight back on back then was impossible, but I just ate and ate and ate. I mean, I had no concept of diet or anything, and even though I was, I mean, I still was probably drinking Friday, Saturday, sometimes a Sunday, and eating takeaways probably for most of that. But I think back then my metabolism was so fast, I could out train my diet to an extent yep. if you know what i'm saying obviously you get you know you can't out train a bad diet but at that age i think you know i, I did and it's i still looked relatively decent in yep. kind of size and shape wise and then i think it was when kind of mma started again that sounds so fucking old man i can't believe i'm 30. it's yeah. when mma started they accept about, it man MMA started coming about and then like all these fucking just oh guys wearing like uh, UFC tops and affliction all started just piling into the meadow and in between like sit they'd be like eight of them holding the one bench or <laughs> the one rack and they'd all it's still happening uh, in between times they'd be like throwing jabs <laughs> at the fucking machines and I'd just be looking like what the fuck is going on here like are these guys serious it's like that is that meme where like your t-shirt says ufc but it looks like it should say fucking kfc <laughs> and it's i just thought and it was always this hardcore gym in dumbarton the marine craft which everyone was always scared of because everybody was massive a and, beast uh, they were you know you knew they were all taking gear and they were f fucking hench and you know strong as fuck and there was a lot of it was weightlifting gym, powerlifting, and there was bodybuilders at it, and it, it was a reputable gym. And I thought, I think I'm going to start going there. I said, F I think I was, I maybe I'm about twenty. I think I said to mint it. I said, you know what, fuck it, we'll just we'll do it. What, what, what's the worst that could happen? And it was cheap as well. It was like I think back then it was like two fifty or three pound in, and the membership was like a hundred pound a year or something. So try good. Aye, and it's everything you wanted like platforms weights in excess of god the plates maybe went up to about a thousand odd kilo and dumbbells up to like 75 kilo not that back then i could do that or now for that matter but uh, uh it was just a it was just a different environment and it's one of those ones you get found out do you know what i'm saying you can hide away in your little kind of your wee world where you think oh i'm the man i'm the man i'm the I'm the big fish in here and in the meadow center i'd walk around in a vest i was not heavily tattooed then but i was still quite tattooed and i was in decent shape and everyone would always kind of look at me but when i went in there it was like okay i'm going to trackies on hoodie on <laughs> hat on just shaking it uh, and it was just a whole different ball game and you would try to do the same things you'd do in there and people would be like what are you doing what the fuck's that? <laughs> you either you saw that or you or you go out. It's so that was kinda that was a big eye opener for me. And yeah, I think it's at that point I met a powerlifter named Tommy and he kinda come up to me just passing comment, he said, You're quite a decent build, you like you ever thought about powerlifting? I said, No, not really, but I said probably give it a shot. And then that's probably the fucking that was that that was that the rest is fucking history and nice one tommy yeah uh, so then is that how you got into training with a group of guys that you train with now or is that just uh, some of them or well 
I trained kind of my luck had it that when Tommy asked me to train with him we must have trained for like a couple of months and he was showing me all the kind of stuff he's done over the years and it's it was good just to get that kind of outside perspective on you and where you thought you were good and they just tear you apart but then next minute he got a job where he was based down south like Monday to Friday so basically it was just kind of right do your own thing like on the basis of all the compound lifts and you know see where it goes and there was still guys in there that kind of kept you right but yeah I kind of trained myself for a good while maybe Craig still tried to keep up with me but uh, he kind of he wasn't really he liked lifting but he wasn't as remember intense. he may be listening remember. you know <laughs> Craig I love you but uh, I wasn't he wasn't as intense as me and I've always when I look at people in the gym even now like I can look at them and know if they're like a new guy or a new girl I can look at you straight away and, and like three months time I'm not going to see you here I can tell still at this day like who's who's got this and who yeah. hasn't yeah. and for me I think just once I kind of started doing those compound movements and powerlifting and seeing what I could potentially do I think that was just that that just something just popped in my brain and I've pretty much lost it ever since so, that's cool yeah. man um so i mean you know most people probably wouldn't have made that switch to that gym out of yeah. fear of yeah. being rejected or not being good enough but well, you gotta fucking at least try yeah well still to this day we don't go to that gym anymore there was a big fallout in politics for some reason but uh, even up until you know we still train there people even when you mentioned it people oh, fuck you train at marine crafter place is fucking mental <laughs> and obviously if the door was open because it was like changing rooms for the football and that so aye, folks screaming their heads off aye, it? we'd all be going fucking mental slapping each other and if it was me and i'd have fucking you know what i'm saying i'd have hate breed or something fucking pantera blaring something yep. going mental i'd be head button stuff and i was a lot of crazy shit so i think people did have a lot of fear of it but now i hear that we've all left us there's actually like females and other people going so aye uh, change days yeah definitely man but would your advice be to somebody who was potentially thinking no maybe not specifically a change in gym like that but just something that they're maybe a bit scared of would your advice always be fucking just oh, do it man like, definitely if it's something that you think you want to do give it a bash nobody nobody ever became better in life or in the gym by staying in that comfortable kind of position totally like staying in that comfortable gym training your strengths and doing what you're good at no one's ever pushed boundaries doing that so i i mean like it was being honest it was i was shitting at training with you like going yeah. to just the, the the new gym yeah um, outcast outcast yeah. like i was uh i was fucking like i'd never I'd always just been uh, trying to lose fat, you know, yeah. um, being in a commercial gym and obviously um, never really been in a, and I've obviously seen all the videos that you, used, you yeah, were posting right. and seen all the guys and what you could lift and all that and here, here's me like, oh, well, I want to try and lift 120 yeah. kilos and I yeah. was like, I was shiting it and don't, don't get me wrong, it was, it was quiet when I got yeah. there so it wasn't bad but Aye. it might have been fucking heaving, I would have yeah. still have been there and I fucking... Loved Aye. it, man. That's thing. If I think it was the Saturdays we've trained and it is quiet, Aye. but see if you're there on a Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. I mean, the place is jumping, and I mean, Andy's got two big speakers set up. You've got Spotify, and you pick your tune if you're going for big lifts. You pick your song. Nobody's going to say anything to you, and if you're needing a spot, you're needing a hand, anything. I mean, half the time people help you take your own plates off, even though they've got nothing to do with your workout. All that, man. It seems like such a tight knit community oh, is. that they just supports each he's, other he's got a good thing i think he kind of limited the amount of members i mean he could exploit it and just let everybody and totally, anybody in. Totally. but i think it's just kind of a lot of people that joined were people that knew andy through his his old shop in partick or people just kind of followed him on facebook and messaged him and yeah i mean what did we have we had a crew of maybe six or seven guys for the minecraft and that's all got kind of 
transitioned to Outcast. So that, that's where you met all them then? Yeah, I met all them in Minecraft. Yeah. And the, the transition to Outcast is, yeah, I think, I mean, a couple of times we trained before it kind of opened and it was just like the six or seven of us and we're like, kind of, you were weary, like, fuck man, this isn't the Minecraft, like, is this going to be the same environment? But we need to remember is we were the ones that made it that atmosphere and yep. I think the more we trained an outcast and put videos up, more people joined and now I think, you know, there's a hundred plus members and as I said the other day, it's it's actually the only gym I've been to. And we've got two power racks and about three platforms and a monolift. And most gyms you go to the dumbbells and the bench presses are saturated with everybody. And you're thinking, brilliant, I can squat and deadlift. This is the only fucking gym where the, all the squat racks <laughs> and all the platforms are taken up. And you're like, oh, you don't want to be that guy that's, oh, you get long left there, mate. You do much more sets. I was thinking, like, but, the videos, like, how the fuck do you even get a fucking uh, squat? Uh, <laughs> basically, you just need to muscle your way in. But even, I think it was Wednesday, I was like, I was, we were waiting for, like, 40 minutes. Like both racks were going and fucking platforms, you're thinking, fucking hell. Like I've been here for forty minutes and done fuck all. Yeah. But I suppose you can't complain with that. It's people I mean I think they've got British championships down in England. That's through the GPC Federation. And I think from Outcast alone there's twenty plus members going Some to reason. compete. Yeah, British remember. championships. So that's just that's just one of the boys when I was in last one of the boys that came in, did you know, see, he was like, he just won something pretty major. Oh, that would be Mark. Aye. Yeah, oh, he, at that time, that would have been IPF Worlds he won. And the IPF is like, that's like the Olympic Aye, okay. standard, like the IPF. If Powerlift never got into the Olympics, it would be the IPF. That's the natty, <laughs> natty. <laughs> That's the Natty Federation that's tested, so everyone's meant to be clean. And Mark, Mark is clean, I'll give him that. But uh, he won IPF Worlds. And I mean, he was uh, with Belarus, I think he went to, to compete in that. And I mean, you're talking the best in the world, basically competing there. Yeah. And he went there, fucking smoked it, destroyed, I think it was two guys that were pure touted to be like the next big thing, like oh these all the IPF spoke about was like these two guys, oh yo, it's gonna be a battle between them two for the one two five class and blah blah blah. Mark came in. Just mopped them all up. And Brilliant, man. Then he just he went to South Africa there for the Commonwealth to represent Scotland. Brilliant. The IPF Commonwealth. Again, breezed it. Completely. Brilliant, man. I think he gold on a squat bench and deadlift, I'm gonna say. And then one best overall total i think what age is he oh, i think he's only 22 Fuck so he's yeah. still a junior and just he's just everybody has genetics on their side or doesn't have genetics on their side and this boy just he's just a freak like he's in that gym squatting like three 300 plus kilo and pulling Same 300 man. plus kilo benching close to 200 Fucking hell. and you're thinking mate you're only 22 and you're a fucking you're a goddamn unit Insane man. And uh, he's, he's actually competing on Sunday again. Uh, I think it's maybe the BDFPA Scottish or something. Right. Well, good luck to him, man. And he's obviously well known around the world now. Aye, uh, from his uh, bare arse. The lad Bible. Uh, <laughs> well, that's, that's the funny thing. It's after he won the IPF Worlds, which is one of the biggest things like, in powerlifting. Like, and so young, he won that. And he come home, try to get an interview with the paper. Nah, I'm not really interested. Who gives a fuck about really? lifting or straight in sports eye? As soon as he does like a fucking uh, bare ass, fucking a buttless, <laughs> a he's buttless all over the eye, world. A buttless singlet. He ends up. I think that video got like sixty odd million fucking hits. Mate, it comes up every day on it, Facebook. Uh, Obviously, you're on Facebook now, but if it comes up every day, somebody that I know commenting it, like, yeah. going, check this out. And all of a sudden, the son got in contact with him, or I think it was his son, and he came in, 
No, I contacted you when I won the World Championships and you didn't want to know me, so you like, fuck off. Oh, no wonder, man. And then he kind of realised, he's like, oh, wait a minute here, I could make <laughs> a couple hundred pound for this story. Uh, and he did, he, he kind of gave, gave an agreement with me, he said, as long as you mention Outcast Barbell and the fact that I won IPF Worlds, then uh, you can have the interview. And he did. Is that video stopped? Yeah. Try and press it again, see if it might tell you it's full or something like that. Back with a Heineken zero percent because it's Friday night and things are getting pretty crazy in here. <laughs> okay, so moving on to the next part. So you have been pretty successful in competitions and doing fucking amazing for yourself in competing. So yeah. I just basically want you to talk about how did you get into actually competing? What have you done and what what have you basically what have you won and where have you been through it? Uh, mm. go for that for us. Uh, like I said, the Pearl of all started because that one guy, uh, Tommy. And he said, Oh, there's a competition coming up soon. I said, oh, I'll do it. And can I just I was probably just being strong for I think I was what, twenty one, twenty maybe? Probably just being strong strong then, st not strong, but I was probably stronger than most people, yeah. I was being strong for strong sake, I wasn't actually, there was no, there was no plan, no thought to what I was actually doing, I was just doing it for doing it's sake, yep. so I'd done a competition and squats went fine, and then I came to my bench, and I didn't know what my max lifts were, what I could do, what I couldn't do, what an opener was like you're, you've got three attempts at each lift so when it came to the bench press i thought oh, i'll just open it like i think it was a like 100 kilo and it buried me like i failed it three times i think i got it to just about lock out but just couldn't lock out so i ended up bombing out the, the competition whereas but you'd done that before no oh well, you yeah, hadn't done 100 kilo before aye in the gym aye in a as a bro rep but aye, okay that's just bouncing off the chest and going yeah, okay but powerlifting you had you have to pause on your chest and listen to the command and for some reason then i mean most people most comps it says you just they just shout press and so you'll come down to the chest you'll be there like a second or two each judge is different uh, depending on their, whether they're an asshole or not <laughs> and this guy had like two blocks of wood and they just slap them together and that was your sign of press. So me not really knowing where I was or who I was then, just kind of, ah, cool. And just fucked it. And that was me, I was out of the competition. <laughs> Good times, man. <laughs> so I was like, sounds like something I'd do. First comp. But the worst part was, I, th I think I, I could get into, you could, in powerlifting, you can either do like full power, which is squat bench and deadlift, or you can do individual bench or individual deadlift. So I think I ended up doing individual deadlift as well at that comp, just so I could deadlift. And even that fucking sucked. Like, I was putting on, I think it was like, probably over 200 and, I think it was about 220-odd kilo. I'd never done it at the gym, never knew if I was possible to do it, and just sucked that. I think I owned it 200 kilo, which was, that was all right. I think I went 210, all right, and then just made a fool of myself in the last one. But... Yeah, that was a kind of, that was an eye-opener, but at the same time I thought, I, I do enjoy this, this yeah. is like... Well, that's good though, because that would put a lot of people yeah, off, obviously. I, I liked, uh, not so much that fed out, was a, that was a kind of, that was the BDFPA, who's affiliated to like, the IPF, so that was like a natural, uh, tested federation, and uh, I don't know, obviously I didn't know anybody, and like nobody really speaks to you that and your first competition yeah. you're nervous so that kind of i thought oh, i don't really like that that kind of fed but i think i can't remember if it was like maybe been two or three months had passed and then again tommy had said oh there's a competition just like a push pull which is a bench and deadlift competition i think that was up at the is it, Glasgow? Is it palace arts yes yeah. over uh, helen Hill. street there was a competition over there he said, uh, I said, ah, why not? Went over and done it and ended up, I think I won. I won that one. We like, 
that was when I actually started because I started off as just raw lifting, as just, which was just like a belt. Yep. And then because Tommy had started giving me uh, powerlifting gear, which is like bench shirts and deadlift suits and stuff. It's just kind of stuff to assist you with the lift. And I think I had a bench shirt at that competition and a deadlift suit. So I think I'd back then I benched like probably about 140 kilos, something totally embarrassing. Oh, aye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> and again, I think I deadlifted like 220 kilo. Not even really, I just wanted to do it to prove myself that, you know, I, I wouldn't fuck it up. And I wasn't really paying attention and like, oh, gold medal, fucking TJ Graham. And it was like, all right, sweet. And then buzzing aye and I think it was a bank holiday that weekend so smashed <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't get smashed up to, I've probably you know. seen you stoning about up the tune that weekend yeah aye bumped into you I was in my athletic prime back then won <laughs> comps and then just go and get absolutely blitzed <laughs> so uh, were you starting to get like were you starting to build in size at this point as well or were you <sighs> just getting strong and not really focusing on size or? it's one of the ones see when you're like me now I mean, I still don't see myself as big, like, see when people come up to me, like, oh, fuck's sake, mate, you're massive, and I'm like, what are you, look, what are you seeing that I don't see, because my mother's telling me that I'm tiny, and then through time, that's the bigger exia, and that's, it's a bad thing, but at the same time, it's a good thing, because obviously, it'll keep you nice, striving yeah. to keep getting bigger, if that's what you want to be, but, uh, I mean, I was doing what I was doing, and, you know, there was other guys that kind of started saying, oh, we're going to start powerlifting. Guys that have been in Marinecraft for years. And I think just with Tommy kind of going away and doing his job, I ended up in with kind of, it was a guy called Heavy D, who's, he's like, he's like kind of dad to me now. He's been, God, he's been there for years now. You still train with him? Yeah, he's still, right, he's, right. he's fucking 51. He's still powerlifting like fucking Amazing. nothing. He's, he's a machine. And then there was him, who else was there? There were a couple of other guys and we all said, oh, we're all, they're all going to do their, com their first competition. So there was this guy called Hamish Davidson who, to see him now, he's like an old guy. But he used to be Europe's strongest man. This guy used to be fucking, like, seriously one of the strongest dudes on the planet back in, like, the 60s and 70s. And then now he's, like... The long hair and have a candlebar moustache and just rah, rah, rah. <laughs> he was i think that was a bpo he was kind of doing a scottish version of that to qualify for like the british and worlds through them and this was up at the the Antonine sports center and by that point i started wrapping my knees and kind of getting a squat suit and you know the weights were getting up and yeah back then i'd probably look at myself and thought, oh, I'm fucking I'm so big, like I'm so so big. But then when I see photos of myself, now I'm like, God, oh, Jesus Christ, man! Look at that pencil neck dick. Like, it's so weird though, because like I was even looking at photos for Leeds 2010. Yeah. Back then you were fucking massive to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> I know. Like, I had Mac, you know, what? like Aye. TJ is so big. But then you look at that, <laughs> you look at that photo and look at you now. You're know, like, oh. fucking. He wasn't he big then. It's oh. I mean, back then... That's only seven, that's, eight, seven years ago. Uh, the difference in mindset, like, as oh, I used to walk around and think, oh, I'm, I'm fucking jacked as <laughs> hell, man. I'm untouchable. Like, but at uh, the same time, even I see pictures of myself in Minecraft, I feel like years ago, there's one I've got on my phone that's just like, I think I'm hungover and I'm just looking at myself like I was so small, like, tiny. And uh, it's just crazy how your mentality changes when... You, uh, probably now, uh, yeah, when I'm in certain situations, I realise, oh, fuck, I'm a bit big for this. Like when you're showing for clothes. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's fucking impossible. Uh, but aye, it's the mindset change on that side of things has just been, that's been crazy to th go from thinking you're fucking Tommy the Tank to now thinking you're this wee small guy. Like, oh, <laughs> Christ. Well, yeah, so I think... Was that the Antonine Sports Centre done that comp? And I it was just, it was, that was my kind of, when I started training with Darren and that, and just, that was when I just first, Andy done his first kind of powerlifting competition then as well. And so we were all kind of still relatively new at everything. And 
and he'd been down strongman for years. He'd been on the kind of Scotland's strongest man circuit for ages. And he was relatively strong in powerlifting terms back then. Mm, maybe not. But there was just a good buzz. And I think we all qualified to get into the British that year. So that was in the January of that competition. And the British was in April. And Darren never went. There was another guy, Davey, who went. And I, I went with him. But... I, I pulled out, like I said, I can't, like, my training was just going wrong and, like, I was missing lifts and, like, I wasn't getting stronger and I was like, nah, nah, fuck this, fuck this, I'm not going, I can't, I can't do this. And so Andy and a couple of other guys, they drove down and me and Davey flew down, I think, and I ended up going to that British and I ended up, I ended up British champion somehow. I mean, my lifts were nothing spectacular, it was like, eh, God, like 237 kilo. 237.5 kilo squat, a one, maybe 157 bench, and like a 230 deadlift, a push. Not to be sniffed at, mate. <laughs> Aye. Yeah, I suppose, and back then, I it was, it was decent for still not really knowing who I was yeah. on that platform. But yeah, after that, kind of, I'd spoke to Andy, and there was another boy, Duncan train with Andy, Duncan and Ken, they were like brothers, and Duncan was, Duncan is r still really smart, obviously, and he was kind of, there's a gym over in America called Westside Barbell, and it's like the, the conjugate kind of method, and it's it's based on like a d dynamic day, which is a speed day, which is, it's all based off percentages and sub-max work, so there was kind of the dynamic day and the max effort day, so he was kind of really into that and he kind of put on to Andy like we should really try this and you know see where it goes and Andy said look you should train with us I can come up and get a couple of sessions in with us and just die after that I mean like I said I think there was a crew of like six or seven of us and just we were just the tightest tightest thing we were just a unit and every con we went to where it be all over, it, all, all over Britain I mean we'd train fucking would be Sunday, Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday and everyone was left in that gym, do you know what I'm saying? And every competition we went to, we were called the the Marine Craft Mothers. And it just got to the stage that's all people wanted to see was the mothers. Like for six guys for a wee small gym in Scotland to go down to the bottom of England and stuff and It's amazing man. Just all these people would see us and oh fuck man, really wish we'd go up and train with you guys, your gym and that looks fucking amazing. It was just that old school brutal iron gym and just, you know, there was chalk everywhere and people getting slapped about and oh it was it was brilliant. What age were you then? Oh god. I'm gonna say twenty Two, three? So still really young. Yeah. Like I said. Yeah. What year did we go to Leeds? Twenty ten? Twenty ten, so that'd been seven years ago, so you've been twenty four then, right? Yeah. So it was before that. Yeah, I think it would have been before that. So you just did you just keep on competing and competing yeah. year by year by year? I think it was about a solid four years. I just I was fucking relentless. Did that I, take over uh, your life? Yeah. Oh. Like uh ate, slept and breathed powerlifting. Like you could not you could not stop me. Like Andy was the same. It was kinda me, Andy, Darren. Well it started off as me, Andy and a guy called Derek training and I would just next minute kinda guys Darren and that off oh, train me using that and like I fucking charge on. And then just that kinda six, seven guys just, aye, just still in the same gym, aye. Yeah, this was Marine Craft, aye. That was just the buzz every time you were in was just, it was phenomenal. So, and like, were you not just constantly fucked? Oh, like, like one session with you, I'm fucking can't even walk for five days. You must be fucking aye, brutal, like, man. Even though the Sunday was a dynamic day, which is lighter and faster. But you're squatting against bands of resistance, or you're squatting against like 40 kilo a side of chains, as yeah. well as the weight on the yeah. bar. And it's all different bars as well. It's like you do three week meso cycles 
of like a certain bar or certain resistance, like be it three weeks of chains or three weeks of the band. And Sunday was brutal. And you're thinking, that's my light day. And then you're thinking, oh, fuck, I'm just starting to feel a bit better. Oh, it's Wednesday. You've got max effort legs again. So you're squatting heavy or deadlifting heavy and you're just like, I can't do this. I can't do this. It must be, it must be, you must have to eat some amount of food to uh, keep yourself energised and recovery, yeah. man. Because you obviously, even though you might not be as big back then, you're still, uh, still a big lad. Back then, I'd, I think back to what I was doing and the biggest thing for me, I, I should have been more proactive and been more active in my recovery and warming up because that's, I think, I've paid the price now, like after all these years of probably not doing that and I mean, my left shoulder's just been buggered for the past two years and you know, you're, you're waking up in the morning and oh, try to put your socks on, you're rolling about your bed and if you a girlfriend, she's kind of waking up going, are you okay? Like, you're making a lot of noise here and you're like, no, this is, this is just life. This is it. Struggling. And I just, I ended up, I ended up a bit of a mess. And like, even now, general living life outside a gym, there's some things that are just hard. <laughs> like, try to climb up things or having the flexibility to do things. It's, it's fucking horrific. Honestly, sometimes I just I th wish I could go back and kick myself. Just to fucking do something or even go in yeah. and get a massage or sport sports massage or see a fucking chiropractor or a physiotherapist, something. But fucking mental therapist. Well there's uh, something to take away for it anyway, advice wise, because mm. obviously even with me training my clients and that, obviously it's nowhere near to the intensity or anything yeah. that you guys would be doing, but still training. But nobody yeah. ever wants to go and pay for recovery because no. it's it's money and aye. people just want to train. They don't want yeah. to recover. They think, but it's really important. Aye. They'll think, oh, I'll just do five minutes to foam roller. <laughs> that'll sort me out. Aye. That's that's not going to make a difference to what you're probably the little imbalances or the problems you've probably been putting off for months or maybe even years. Yeah. Uh, the times I have been a like either sports massages or uh, a physio, you know, it's been great. And but like you say, it's just that money, I think. But then see when you just get any other routine, you think, oh, actually, I'm feeling better. It's fucking, yep. it's worth it. Uh, uh, it's definitely something that everybody should definitely keep up. Uh, 100% man. Seek out somebody that's good. Oh, right. aye, because again, it's like everything. There's good yeah. ones and there's not so good ones and probably about the same price as well, which aye. is a shocking thing. So, just look back here, talk about your competing this year. You got to like when you're 23, 24. Yeah. What, what, what progress from there? Because obviously that you're, oh. I think you've just mentioned kind of British because yeah. you ended up all over Europe now, didn't you? I ended up in France and stuff. I competing. Uh, after the British, I was just kind of, everything I'd done was just kind of winging it. I went in and done, look, one day I'd do squats, one day I'd do deadlifts or bench. And then when Andy said, look, start training with us, and like I said, like my max deadlift at that British was 230 kilos, and that was in the April, and the, I think, there was a competition in November, where I then went on to, was opening my deadlift at 230 kilos, I was repping that for five in the gym. Fucking hell. So in that period, I changed my training, having a plan and following it and being around guys that were motivated and on the same yeah, journey, totally. making me totally accountable for everything I'd done, just it changed, Massive. It changed the game and yeah, my squat went, oh, that went crazy as well. My bench was just, everything just became just silly, silly, silly gains on everything, which I wasn't complaining about it. I was going into competitions and yeah, doing strong as fuck. <laughs> Don't know. I, I think I moved up a weight category as well. So I ended up in like the 110 kilo class, which is literally, I think it's I think 105 kilos, about 16 and a half stone. So I would say about 17 odd stone maybe. And yeah, I was competing against some big guys and guys that, cause I ended up going to compete in a non-tested federation where guys are 
it's up to you if you want to take gear, take gear if you don't, if you don't. Uh, I ended up competing against some big guys, so there was a lot of seconds and thirds and I don't think I won a British for, I, think I, I haven't won a British after that in fact. Uh, I think I went down to Aldershot with big ideas, I thought, oh fuck man, my lifts are going fucking silly. And then a big Polish guy came <laughs> and he was in my category. And he, he wasn't tall, he was just so wide. And like, I think he, I think I squatted like 325 kilo. He squatted like 340. I benched like, say like 180 or something, 190. He benched like 210, 220. Fuck's sake, what a yeah. prick. <laughs> I know. I deadlifted like 275 or 280. He deadlifted like 300 odd and it's just like, no chance. Uh, and that was a British, and I'm thinking, I was like, just do that fucking usual. He's not even British. He's not even fucking British. <laughs> fucking, but, Raging. Aye. Uh, but that was just, those days, I think back, those were like, the, I was in my prime then. Like, Is that your biggest numbers ever? No. Oh, God, no. Fucking, no chance. But that kind of, the more I competed and the more I trained and was around those guys, the more my mind kind of, I opened the door to, I, I, everybody's obviously got their own, everybody that puts themselves through like training or enjoys that, like that pain, everyone obviously has an imbalance in them of some sort of enjoyment they get out of it. Yeah. And I don't know, I just have, I've got a major imbalance I think and it, people that have seen any videos of me or seen me at competitions knew that like I ended up becoming quite notorious for shouting at fucking barbells and weights and throwing them about, uh, head butted, monoliths, doors, fucking you name it and yeah that kind of, I really opened the door to a whole kind of I don't know, it was a different level of insanity, like, I don't know, I knew it was always in me, but I think powerlifting and lifting weights let it out, yep. and on that platform, it was just, you know what, whoever's watching is watching, and whatever happens here, <laughs> you're either going to laugh or you're going to enjoy it. Yeah, uh, totally. And yeah, so after that, just, yeah, my numbers just kept flying up and up Amazing. and up, and uh, just the more intense my training got, and like you said, you said earlier, just about it took over my life, and it wouldn't. I think back, it did in a bad way, and it didn't in a good way. You know what I'm saying? It kept me, it kept me in at weekends. It stopped me drinking and wasting money and such. But at the same time, it kind of hindered me for nights with family, parties, and stuff like that. Kind of social events. You're, you do give up a lot to do it, but when you're enjoying something like that. Oh, mate, that's exactly that, man. You're, you're kind of... Would you ever fucking give up any of those experiences you had? No. To no, get not competing? Not. Exactly, no. here's your answer, so... No. Fucking, I hate my family anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really. So, I, so you said you never won a British after the, after that one you talked about, did you, what was the other stuff? Because I know you have won stuff more yeah. recently, what was all that? Was well, that, I think... I know you won when we were living together, you won in France, I think. Yeah, that was the World Championships I won from the, the who, would the, who would the BPO affiliated to? I think it was like the WPC, like the World Powerlifting Congress or something. And that was in Waron or something, France. And I fucking hate French people. Fucking can't stand them. Sorry for anyone French listening. Mm, but, uh, aye, so it was like in the middle of nowhere. I think it was like a ski resort. And I, oh, I think maybe, I think most of the, the crew went over, like, I think there was maybe seven or eight of us at that time, all went over and I walked away, I think I competed against, I think there was seven guys in my category, including my training partner, Derek, he came second, uh, and then I think there was five, five other people in the category, I was in the one tens at that point. And I, I think I squatted 325 kilo. I benched, God, I can't even fucking remember that. I think I benched like 
210 or 212 and I deadlifted like 285 kilo and I think I think my squat actually is the, the number that won me it. I think it was quite close between me and Derek and the guy that came third. But yeah, and that was the kind of, that was the kind of changing point. Like for me, stepping outside of powerlifting, I think that's when I realized I thought, is this fucking worth it? Like I've just, the, the competition was, it was badly run, whereas the BPO competitions who was affiliated were brilliant. The trophies were fucking amazing. You know, the competitions ran smoothly. There was never any problems. The spotters were amazing. And anybody that competes in powerlifting knows the only reason you're going for those numbers and the only reason it's possible is because you know there's a tight crew that are ready to catch you or the bar if something goes wrong. So I think I arrived in France the day before, so I watched all the kind of lighter people compete the day before and there was just, there was bars getting dropped and people really getting close to being really hurt. Can so we were all kind of like, well, this is like guys squatting 200 kilo. We're going to be taking this up a notch yeah. tomorrow. We're going to be squatting 300 plus. So ah, uh, there was that. And then I think I kind of, I was happy what I'd done. And I remember I knew I'd obviously won it. And I was sitting up in the bleachers waiting for my name to get called. And I was sitting thinking, oh, fuck, I'm going to cry. I'm going to fucking cry. I'm so doing it, man. I'm crying here. This is everything I've wanted. I've wanted to be, I've wanted to be a world champion. And then when he called my name and he gave me the trophy, and this trophy was like, remember the wee fucking two pound ones you used to get at football? The wee plastic ones with the wee fake marble bottom, a wee gold plaque on it. And I looked at it and I was like, I've won better trophies for coming second and third in Britain, or at the Scottish. And a wee medal, just like a wee like guy doing a snatch on it. That's fucking stuff. Sorry, keep going in the room, mate. We'll sort it out. Fucking. Uh, I was like, snatch isn't even powerlifting, it's fucking Olympics. So that kind of threw me, man, and just, I thought, can I, is this what I want to be doing? Like, keep going with this or fucking, and it, as well, my life kind of, I was putting powerlifting before all my jobs. You know, I've quit jobs because I couldn't make the gym because of my hours. And I was paying out all the money for powerlifting and getting nothing back. And uh, I think it was the following year, I had obviously qualified because when you're world champion, you can qualify straight away next year. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to move out of weight category because there was a guy I competed against as who kind of, you have those people that you compete against that just bring it the best in you and they make the competition good. Yeah. He'd moved up to the 125 class. So I thought, fuck it, I'm going to move up to the 125 class. And kind of bef just before France I'd kind of started seeing a girl and stuff and you know that way I didn't I don't think I'd I think I'd been single for a while so everything was just focused on training and yeah I think come that next year I thought I'll move up to the 125 class so I'd in excess I could put on 15 kilos of body weight whether it be good or bad it didn't matter and I bulked up I mean I was eating at work alone, I was eating five, six meals a day, weight in excess of five to 600 grams of carbs, be it white rice or potatoes a day with my chicken or steak burgers or red meat. And then if I got home that night and decided uh, I want a pizza and whatever else, I'd, I mean, I think at one point I could still go home and eat a 12 inch stuffed crust pizza and like a large chips and cheese and not even, not even think about it. <laughs> Fuck. You know what I'm saying? It was it's a dream for some people. Oh no! <laughs> oh, it was it was fucking great eating that way, but I did. I became a fat mess, and <laughs> 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 no, my my stomach was big, but I still looked. My shoulders and my arms and my legs were fucking huge, and everybody just kept on saying to me, "Oh, mate, you you the size you are the now is fucking unreal." I was like, "Well, it doesn't feel good. Like I feel fucking shit." So the, the heavier I got, the heavier the weights then got. And then 
my body just started to suffer like big what, what, time. what weight were you in the competition i weighed in 122 kilos i think i was just i was just shy of 20 stone at that point Fucking hell. and every week i must have been squatting up close to 250 to 300 kilos every week and then the following night i'd be benching ending up to 200 kilos plus and yeah my shoulders my shoulders were a mess my hips were a mess my knees everything like everything just became a fucking hassle and mental yeah i think well, you're obviously you're sitting in a truck all day yeah i, I was sitting that wouldn't have helped no so we were actually the marine craft at the time we were hosting the british that year up in alexandria and i i mean going by my training my numbers were going to be massive like silly big and they, and they were and they were but my body was just it was done so i'd done all this training my 12 week 12 week to 15 week training cycle i went into the competition i opened it 320 kilo which was five kilo off my max from the worlds that fucking last year in november and it was nothing like 320 kilo was nothing like that <laughs> up down and it was like blinking you missed it and i went 340 kilo even faster fucking hell man then it was my mate that was calling the numbers martin uh, and he said oh just go 360 which is like three three six three would be 800 pounds bang on in american money so i thought oh, fuck it i'll go 360 and it'll live me forever unracking that and take it out i thought oh my god that like i've never felt a weight before but that was just that blew my fucking mind and i just remember standing there thinking this is the heaviest thing i've ever felt in my fucking life but they wanna <laughs> i don't know but the stupidity in me said go with it fucking start going down so i went down and i get most of the way up and then i think i maybe just lost tightness in my back and before i knew it, the spotter taking me and put me back into the rack and the adrenaline was going and i, I fucking i went mental i said i fucking had that i was fucking mine because my back was always my strongest part in the squat if i was failing my back would kick in and it would look it would look horrible but i would get a lift so uh i i think my knee wraps were still done so they're tight as fuck you can't even walk as it is in them and there was a chair next to me i booted the chair went flying up into the fucking air landed my ass in front of this is a massive gym hall in front of everybody the chair just missed some wee guy uh, Andy, who was trying to wrap his knees at the time for his squat, he's looking up, thinking, I'm trying to get in the zone here. I'm dying to fucking laugh at you. So that came. And by the time I got back to the warm up room, my shoulders were just like, no, no more. Like, we can't take this. So I said, I don't think I can bench. I can't do this. My opener was like 220 kilo. And one of the guys it was actually as who i was competing against he had this like like horse gel horse numbing cream or something <laughs> you like use for horses or some shit he's like put that all over your shoulders and give it half an hour and right enough next time i'm in the bench i'm in the warm-up room shoulders were all right couldn't feel a fucking thing went out a little numb went out done my 220 kilo opener and that was easy enough and then my best bench in competition today is 222.5 kilo i just missed 227.5 which is 500 pounds and that american money again but that's the one that's always eluded me that's the one i wanted but i've just never got so i said fuck it go 230 next get in for it missed it third lift 230 again missed it and that just i was like fuck this and the deadlifts came again my best deadlift was 285 i think i opened opened at 270 which was really it was actually comfortable and then i went 285 in the second lift and 
I get red lighted for it, so they failed me for that lift. And I went out in the third lift and I had to pull it again and it was that was all I had. And then kind of after that, that was me. I just lost it. I just stopped. Just stopped there and then. That was me. I was like, I'm done. I can't fucking do this anymore. How old was that? A couple of years? Yeah, that was two years ago. Two years. That'll be probably three years next April. So but it was it was good to do because it got my life kinda on track with having actually having money and getting myself sorted with a good job yeah, and totally. having plans for life other than just being in a gym. So I can't really fault it, but yeah, I'm glad. Well, you hammered it for long enough. I'm sure a rest wasn't the worst thing. No, I know. I was, obviously I was still training, like not just not. I still went in and done bits and bobs of powerlifting, but at the same time I felt bad because I was training with all these guys that were still so focused on competing. I felt like I was taking away time that they could have been under the bar or whatever. So I said, you know what, guys, I'll kind of just step away for a bit and you just do what you do. And I just kind of often started doing my own thing, which was not really much. Pretend I was a bodybuilder, <laughs> which I somehow got fatter. <laughs> Chasing those abs. <laughs> <laughs> First human bodybuilder to actually get fatter. <laughs> Fucking, someone forgot to send a memo that you actually have to cut. Again, turn my phone over, mate. We'll uh, get the video back up. Like, amazing. What you achieved mm. and all that man like when you were doing out doing all that i was pretty much spending my life getting pushed <laughs> I know. and uh, obviously now i'm in a place where training and fucking you know work you know working on my, my body and stuff like that is is what i live for now but yeah. I, you know obviously looking back i wish i fucking was uh, joining you in those days I instead know. of fucking messing my life up but Aye. at the same time obviously i can't think about that as well for reason and all that, i think I always said that when I started kind of powerlifting and I started feeling that like I was getting good at it. I said, oh, I wish I'd done this when I was like 17, 18. Like yeah. kind of started then, but it's that old fucking hindsight's an amazing thing, isn't it? Definitely, man. So, yeah. still kind of staying on competing. What was, I don't know, I don't know if, I think you said you maybe winged quite a lot of it, but what was like the lead up to a competition like in regards to prepping for it? Because I remember when we were going out and all that, you would say, I'll uh, come out, but I'm not drinking. Yeah. But, so obviously Aye. it was quite strict. Oh, well, I kind of forced it upon myself. I mean, there's, there's, you can train and compete and still have that balance, which is good. If you want to go on a Saturday night, there's plenty of guys that still live that way and it worked for them. But I just felt I needed that focus. Like, it was, say we'd done a 12-week kind of meso, 12-week training cycle. It'd be like three-week meso cycles on the the kind of lighter days on a Sunday so like before you knew it you thought you were week one but then before you knew it week 12 your openers were there yeah so and in life what's what's three months do you know what I'm saying I'm saying like if you can't if you can't dedicate three months of your life to something to try and better yourself or become something that you want to be or do then you fucking get no chance to do anything if you can, <laughs> you know? Agreed, man, agreed, totally. So... That's the thing, like, I think when, um, when people are trying to, obviously, I'm dealing with more of the side of people wanting to get lean and look great. Yeah. And I think that, like, a lot of the time when people are dieting and they're on low calories, yeah. the struggle for a lot of people is that they get asked to go out with mates yeah. and they have a heavy night and then right. that's it a kind of week is lost and they feel terrible but then the other mates are like but you still need to have a life I it's know. like well you can have a life but if right. you're telling yourself i'm going to get in the best shape of my life yeah and you can not do that for a specific period of yeah. time whether that be three months six months whatever then it's like yeah. are you do you want it that much yeah well, that's i mean obviously when you become known as like you probably get it and you go to parties and like even like family members or whatever you haven't seen it's they always want to talk to you oh gym gym or oh, i've started something like but oh, i started going to the gym but it's not for me and then 
Like it's when see when people are that age, you start saying, "Well, see if it's not for you now. It's it's never going to be. Because yeah. see if you're not going to dedicate yourself to it, then just don't do it. Because it's just be it's going to become a hassle to you uh-huh. if you're not ready to dedicate, like at least ninety to hundred percent of yourself to that goal. Then you know it's going to fail miserably. Totally. And yeah, you're just going to end up you're going to end up hating the gym even more and going less fucking hating yourself as well because you yeah. tell yourself because you beat yourself up about it and stuff yeah but uh, the thing we like probably people that are coming to you clients and people that are just starting the gym it's that i need this now like this I need, I need this now mentality yeah. like i deserve this i'm going to oh, this week's been hard i've really dieted hard where the fuck's my abs and it's like n- this is a week this is a day totally. this is a month you know, it's, and people say to me now, like, oh, look, when they, people come up to me and talk about powerlifting and that, and, oh, fuck, I, you ended up some shape, some strength, you think, well, that was seven years, that was seven years, do you know, that wasn't, oh, God, this is a year, and, yeah, there is some freaks out there that can do stuff in a Probably. couple of years yep. and a few months or whatever, but it's a never-ending process, like, it does not stop and the mentality I was in, like everything was for purpose. Eating was for the purpose, my sleeping was for purpose and my job my job was just to pay for these things yeah. as well. You know, I haven't had its purpose and that was just to provide for me to power lift. And I think especially diet I mean dieting is fucking hard. There's no two ways about it. Totally man. But I think, I think, I mean, uh, how you can expect to live 15, 20, fe- 25, 30 years of your life, yeah. eating whatever the fuck you want and not giving yeah. a fuck to then diet for yeah. a month and go, well, this is pish because I'm yeah. not in great shape <laughs> because know. it's like, it doesn't fucking work like that, man. No. And when you get in great shape, what are you going to do? You're yeah. going to start eating Aye. shit again and, lo- and lose it all. No. You need to, like, it has to be long term. Yeah. It has to be long term. I mean, I got... When I got, what was that, three years ago? I was kind of in between competitions and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to start doing cardio and watch my diet. And I'd done a diet called the, the carb backload, which pretty much during the day, you don't eat any carbs or it's max 30 grams. And you do like a 10 day kind of cooling off period, you don't have any yeah. carbs. And then on that 10th day, yeah, kind of carb load and you can have, after you train, you can have donuts, muffins, all in moderation, obviously. And it's obviously just to re- replenish the kind of yeah. glycogen in the system. Yep. But, oh, I got in fucking great shape. I mean, I was in decent shape, but I think I was still kind of chubbed from the powerlifting. So, see, when I started adding cardio in and, and a calorie deficit, all that kind of thick muscle started coming through. I remember those sexy pictures, man. Oh, I was a those fucking... Those sexy selfies? I was a fucking whore. Like, <laughs> waking up was fun because uh, I'd go in and look at the dry. And you'd be like, oh, fuck, man. The abs are popping more. Fucking delts are banging. It's fucking, everything's looking good. Oh, Instagram. Chicks. <laughs> girls that don't even, girls that are friends with you on Facebook or you haven't spoken to in years, they all come out of the woodwork. See, when a guy st- starts looking good or posting photos of that, it's like, start the message, you start going, oh, hey, how are you? You're like, well, I'm good as you can see <laughs> but it doesn't mean i want to speak to you <laughs> so i don't know i enjoyed it but at the same time i didn't like the person that it made me become like on that aspect because even when i went out and stuff and you were drinking and girls would come up to you and you'd, you'd touch you and be like oh, thank you. oh what's under here oh that's right fucking ab sandwich <laughs> 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 and yeah but like you said in that, that diet aspect I then start. I love food. Yeah. I can eat like a fucking pig. And that's what I started to think. I was like, I'm restricted. Like, I need to eat this way forever and do cardio like this forever to be in this shape. So, I kind of maintained it for a while. And then, just that way, the more I ate bad food, the more it disappeared. And I thought, at the same time, I can't... I need balance, but at the same time... Uh, I just don't know. I just... I think my love of food got the better of me, and I let it go. You can't really fucking lift the weights that you want to lift on and fucking stay 
it was hard at points. Low body fat percentage. Yeah. Ah, yeah. because I think, I think you actually measured me at one point. I think I made it to, I think it was eleven or twelve percent body yeah, fat at one I point. That, yeah. And oh, don't get me wrong, I felt fucking, I felt great, and I, I actually felt bigger than I do now, even though I'm carrying obviously a lot more weight. I mean, I think I'm, I'm nearly twenty kilo heavier than I was back then. I still felt massive then, but I don't know for like you say my purpose and yeah, lifting. Sure. It was it's it's hard to maintain because you do really need to bang the calories into your lift. Percent man. Those kind of weights. Aye, cool man. Next bet is like to talk a lot about what training does for people's mindset. I'm coming from a place myself where I was not in a good place yeah. in training. F- Master well, well, it's basically the gym and working on my my body and my physique and everything else. Basically, what kept me out, yeah. kept me out the pub and kept me busy and gave me that fucking purpose and that goal to be a better fucking version of myself. Yeah. You know, I remember days are f- old days are a bit blurry, mate. You know, yeah. even for both of us sometimes. But <laughs> I remember we would. St- you know, you were in Dumbarton, I was in Glasgow. We didn't, we didn't get to see each other all that often when we were younger. Mm-hmm. But obviously, we had like the band, and yeah. you would, you would drive us places. You would come up to Glasgow and have nights out, buffeties and all this stuff. Yeah. You did have a bit of a mad streak in you, oh. didn't you? Yeah. Um, fuck yourself, like getting yourself into a bit of spot of bother now and then. Oh, yeah, I had a fucking a rap sheet as long as my arm. Um, more money out in fines than I'd like to fucking remember and yeah and uh, it's probably it was probably not great that you know being that way drinking that way yeah. and stuff for like you know your mental health and uh, you know going to work and stuff like yeah. that and what what does uh, what does training do to help you with that basically or to help you stay in the straight and narrow it's in regards to just your mind it's it's just it's just therapy like that you and that barbell is just that's nothing's coming between you whether it's barbell dumbbell and those whatever you're in training an hour two hours whatever you want to do 45 minutes nothing else matters do you know what i'm saying and that's your release if you've had a shitty day at work a shitty day in a fucking house someone's giving you shit you get in there and you take care of business and like I said, nothing else matters. That's just, if you don't want to go and talk to anyone about your problems, uh, I believe being in a gym, doing that is easily as good as going and speaking to people, in my opinion, but obviously that's only my opinion, but that's the way I've raised myself. My, my gym life is my release to probably how pissed off and fucking annoy them at general life or bitter or whatever. That's probably why I went down that route of powerlifting because no. I'm a, from a young age I've been pissed off, I've been angry, and being in the gym lifting weights just I don't know. It's just a release. It's just you're at peace. You're calm. As much as sometimes it doesn't look it, but. That's you, this is your... Aye, if that's you going mental though, you're saying you're fucking screaming and blah, blah, yeah. but that's a good release, man, yeah. you know what I mean? You're not fucking out causing any harm to anybody no, or yourself. I know. And, uh, you know, you're fucking, you're doing something that makes you happy, essentially, yeah. at the end of the day. Aye, it's, I can't, I can't remember a time where, say I've been pissed off about something and I've kind of, not went to the gym or I've got over it by not training. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I've always, you know, even though you feel like, oh fuck that, I don't want to go around, go in there and be around people. You go in, you get the session done and you walk out and you're like, thank fuck I done that there. Totally. Because. Well, this is the thing, bud, like so many people, not just, not clients, clients as well, obviously, but friends and people that I know, yeah. they always say, I don't know how you do it, man. Like, I don't know how you always make the gym. Like, I'm just yeah. so tired after work and I'm just like, I've fucking been there, man. Yeah, but know. at the end of the day, you've got to think of like the fucking end, uh, the end goal uh, of that day 
to fucking feel better. Yeah. How are you going to feel better pissed going home and sitting on the couch and eating yeah. fucking crap? Or go, is going in training, as hard as it might seem, yeah. when you're fucking come out of that office or whatever, it's always going to be fucking better. Yeah. Hundred percent, man. Like, I mean, you fucking, you work long fucking yeah. shifts, man. Like, I remember when when we were staying together, you would leave the house on a Monday, and I would see you uh, uh, on the Friday, Friday or something, or something man. Something, eh? Um, so you'd been, you know, you're obviously going to know how it feels to be tired yeah. after a long shift, oh, but aye. it's all always always helps in my opinion. Aye, it's it just comes down to that thing, you know, you want it or you don't, and I don't like. That's what you hear from people. Oh, I don't know. How, you can, how can you be bored going to the gym after work? How can you be bored prepping two or three meals? How can you, how can you be bored? And it's like that mentality. Like if you don't if you don't want it, just don't force yourself into it because yep. it's not going to work for you. If you're not hundred percent committed to that, then it's not happening. How many people do you know? Or have you seen through your life that are always trying to be good? or yeah. have fucked it and it's just Aye. a constant cycle yeah. of day one of this day one Aye. of the diet and then by the end of the week there's a mcdonald's yeah no. on the instagram or whatever Aye. and it's just like that's as you're saying there it's refeed. like <laughs> refeed oh it's been a hard week but that's what you're saying there though it's like you know if you if you're not in a place to be able to do it you're probably yeah. better not trying because no. at the end of the day you're only going to get more pissed off yeah. with it because you're not going to succeed. You need, yeah. you, need, you, need, you need to be honest with yourself sometimes. Yeah. And I think when people say that to me, and then, like, oh, I mean, I'm up at, say, I got up at half five or six o'clock. In half an hour, I can prep five meals. Easy. Five meals, four with, like, either red meat or chicken with greens, and I'll have one meal. We like grilled bacon and eggs and that's for like six to half six i can prep five meals for the day and i can eat them every two hours fire a fucking a skier yogurt with a scoop of protein in there as an rv snack yep and it's like people say oh i just i don't have the time for that. i can not bother i don't have the time for that i said well make the time it's more effort going to the shop <laughs> at lunchtime and like, you add it up over the week if you're working in the city or whatever, going to a place, how much are you actually spending every day going and getting sandwiches and totally. this, that, and the next thing? And what the fuck? What's half an hour? Like, say you you start work at nine, you need to get up at seven, why not get up at half six? Why not get up at half six? Or the night before, if uh, you don't like your yeah. meals fresh. I, I'd done it for long enough. I used to come in for the gym at eight, nine o'clock at night after being out working for 12 hours a day. I'd prep all my chicken oops, and my veg and it would sit there overnight i mean it was fucking disgusting when i think back on it but at least it put it in the fridge it was there to eat and it done its it served its fucking purpose yeah and i just think if people stopped saying oh i don't have time i don't have time then they'd maybe fucking realize now you know what I'll allocate the time, I'll get it done, I, try it, whether it be a week, a month, whatever. Uh, Not having time is a very, it's, it's a very poor, poor uh, excuse, cool. to be honest, because like, I'm sure if somebody said they don't have time to um, prep meals or go to the gym, I'm probably sure they've had time that day yeah. to go on Facebook oh, or I, watch something in the telly. Uh, there's people sit and procrastinate and do fuck all, and then go on like, Instagram and see all these fitness chicks or fitness guys and think, oh, fuck. you know, can I wouldn't really, I'd really like to live my life like that or whatever. But they'll sit and look at it, but not actually think, you know what, I could put this plan into action. And even for the gym, if people can't, again, allocate 45 minutes to an hour to go and do, I mean, a quick circuit of four movements for four sets for 12 reps and then maybe do 10 minutes cardio i mean i think it's that fucking easy i think people build up their head to think that they need to go every day or something yeah like they'll see they'll see you maybe going every day or five days a week whatever and think mm -hmm. oh that's crazy but you don't it doesn't have like if you're yeah. just trying to lose some weight or be healthier yeah three literally three hours a week yeah i know is enough to keep yourself ticking over and yeah. lose weight if your diet's okay and oh yeah i fish for eye it's mad but I just, I think, guy, it's just like, it's too, it's too many, like, you know, 
people people either want to get in phenomenal shape and they'll do it and mm-hmm. do what it takes or like going out the weekends more important yeah but you know, drinking and eating I know takeaways it's, is that's uh, that's what they want more. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's no, what they want. If that's your escape, then that's it. Good times. But if you're going to try something and tell yeah. yourself that you want something, go for it. Like yeah. put everything into it because you might find that you actually commit to it with a lifelong yeah. hobby and something that you never thought you would have. Aye. What's that? It's like, do you remember? You'll probably remember yourself, like when I when I stopped drinking, and I says to you, yeah, I was yeah, like, no, look, I I'm going to fucking start going to the gym here. Can you I give know. me some tips and stuff? What is it? What, did we go to the gym at the Four Corners, wasn't it? I think it was. Uh, ah, it might have been that one or Pure Gym yeah. at the time, but like. I never knew what was going to happen at that point. Yeah, Look at me now, like aye. you know, that's that's an extreme case. But yeah, I know. at the same time, I think. I mean, obviously, I I grew up with you and seen I seen the extent of what was going down on a weekly basis. <laughs> and next minute, you're like, mate, I, can I want to start going to the gym and I want to get in shape. And obviously, I'm thinking, right, I understand, man. I get that. Fucking more power to you. If you need a hand, I'm fucking there. I think you were kind of. I think you were maybe getting trained week. By even at the time, well, I just started. I I think I'd know. St- I think when I got um, I got the you you sent me. You got me protein, yeah, and you gave me the Yorkie weights, yeah, and then I protein think from my legal supplier and <laughs> 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 the good stuff, All the right. gear, and then I and then I started training with Eb. Yeah, um, I mean I'm, I st- still like remember that gym session. I think, did I make you squat now? I just showed you how to squat. And yeah, so I hadn't, I, maybe I had, I can't remember, but yeah, I hadn't squatted before, I hadn't never deadlifted yeah. before. Great person to start with. That's <laughs> exactly, man. But that's yeah. the thing, though, like, I, I'd, uh, I'd, I was one of those people who yeah. was looking at you going, I wish yeah. I could, tra- I wish I could lift, I wish I had yeah. muscles, I wish I wasn't f- overweight, and yeah. I said, you know, I said all that, I wish, I wish, I wish, when, there was nothing stop. The only thing yeah. stopped me from doing that was me Why not you? fucking doing it. Yeah. You always said to you, come to the gym if you want, but obviously yeah. at that point I was like, no fucking way. Do you know what I mean? But uh, um, and my advice to people, like I mean, like yourself, and obviously you fucking realised you had it in you, and look what you became now. You're like fucking, you're in much better shape than I am, and you've way more into fitness than I am. Oh, I wish I was much bigger, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. Everybody, even though people think they don't have it in them, everybody has it in them. Fucking right, man. To train hard and to follow a good diet. And I mean, I've done it every fucking diet under the sun, whether it be carb backload, fucking keto, fucking carb loading, fucking carb cycling, fucking you name it. Uh, And I've always reached my goals, either whether it was from want to gain weight or lose weight, if I'm in the calorie deficit, if I'm eating excess calories, it always worked. And I think people just, like you say, I think they they overanalyze it in their head and make it harder than it has to be. Because we all know the foods we need to eat to be in a healthy, decent shape, but instead, I'll eat pizza and chocolate. Like, you fucking know that's not going to help you. And you know sitting on the couch is not going to help you. The more you move, the more you're going to be in a better fucking shape, state of mind, and just f- overall physical, just healthier fucking lifestyle. It's totally, man. It's not hard, and I, but I understand people do need guidance from like yourself. A PT. Say, the biggest thing is accountability, man. Yeah. People need accountability, or because yeah. guaranteed, most people guaranteed. Most weekends they will get an offer to yeah. go to the pub, go to a club, go out for food, which will probably be shite food. Yeah. They'll have some sort of offer. If they don't have some reason to say, no, nah, I'm not doing it, mm-hmm. what's to stop them from yeah. fucking doing it? And obviously that's why people like myself are in a job. Yeah. Because it's accountability is just yeah. it's big, man. I think as well, like in the weekend thing, like, I mean, obviously if you want to take time out for drinking and stuff, yeah, go for it. But like, I think the cheap meal thing oh god i don't know if i can have that they then get so scared of it that they end up just failing anyway because yeah. of again they build it up in their head so much that oh carbs carbs fats fats sugars salts i yeah. can't eat it yeah. 
Whereas if probably you won't like me saying it, but if I'm in a calorie deficit Monday to Friday, but I love nothing more than a Saturday, a fucking get a pizza or gorging on something, but I know my limit. If you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like Definitely. my food, and I need that because I know if I don't have that one bit of enjoyment, I know come Monday to Friday I'm right, going man. to fail somewhere, and it's. But just but that's the thing is that I'm all about flexibility, moderation. Yeah. I don't want people. I don't want my clients depriving themselves of the food yeah. they enjoy. I yeah. actually I hate it when people tell me that they've been told they cannot eat that because yeah. you can eat anything. Yeah. As long as your calorie deficit is there, you're I fine. Know. But it's just that that's what you're saying. No, people are building it that much up in their head. Yeah. They have that one thing, yeah. and that turns into a day of eating Aye. crap yeah, it's a or week. a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's the problem. It's the it's the, it's a binge. It's gonna be a binge or a yeah. of what they think is right and wrong. And it's like if you're in a big enough calorie deficit during the week, during yeah. the week, you can have more food at the weekend yeah. and still stay on track. But you train like fuck as well. Yeah. So, and it's. I mean, I know you get to the stage where you'll know your body after this well I know during the week if I've not had enough carbs and I've trained heavy and I'm walking around like a zombie I know my muscles need something back in so even if it's just us after the gym having like a muffin or a fucking a donut something or just going home white rice oats something just I know is going to help me the next day then fucking I'm all about it like of course and I've I'm obviously I'm not strict on a diet so during the week if it's something stupid like flapjacks or fucking that then yeah I don't stop myself but the diet during the week I said something I enjoy on a Saturday I make that out like I don't enjoy Monday to Friday I don't mind just still eating good food yeah like the stuff you like I don't mind eating I mean I, right now I'm fucking I have like four meals of fucking steak burgers and broccoli <laughs> and the dream and then like a meal of grilled bacon and fucking eggs and i eat that every day and i have done for the past month and why because you enjoy it because <laughs> it's cause i don't hate it you, you wouldn't be eating bacon if you didn't like yeah. to taste it but people say you know see you eating it and you're like fuck say i look shite mate and you're like i know but it's my dinner and i'm fucking eating it uh this is my enjoyment if you're eating your pieces or whatever at work and charge on i'm doing what i'm doing you're doing what you're doing totally. but and i always kind of beat my training or the diet there's a thing from a company called elite fts who's like kind of they do like kind of they sell sports equipment for like powerlifting and strength but they do like they they share like a lot of content and stuff just for like strength enthusiasts or whatever and it was always the three p's they said it was prepare perform prevail and that's that's what i lived by that's all i thought about and everything is preparing and then the performance and then you prevail so totally man again everyone has it in them but i, I may we, we may don't like to go around in circles too much with the diet and stuff thing like that but where people mostly feel with diet is not being prepared yeah. and then buying Definitely. rubbish but the not being prepared is from not putting the time aside yeah. to actually do it or choosing Aye. to you know lying on the couch there at night going i should probably cook my lunch for the morning but yeah. i can't be bothered so I i'm not going it and then that's when it but the preparation is fucking massive man Aye. i've been there fucking countless times i'll come in and i think oh fuck i can't even bother washing my fucking tubs out man fuck us i'll get it in the morning but then you're allocating a couple of minutes to clean out your fucking Tupperware. And it's always going to be times where yeah. people are too tired to do shit. But the thing is, it's when it's consistent habits that you're always yeah. doing. See if you do, see if you do, go off track for a week, cut a week. If you've been doing something for years, you're always going to go back. Or be, oh it's right. going to be easier to go yeah. back and do that rather than if you're just always stoppy yeah. starting, stoppy starting. But yeah. this is the thing, it's, again, it's like people will look at maybe fitness professionals or fitness mm -hmm. models online who mm -hmm. will be eating like cheap meals mm -hmm. pizzas and blah yeah. blah and that's not going to affect that person's body because they're so they've got so much muscle mass yeah they train so much then it's not really going to affect them but if i've got they're on steroids that that could be, may well be the <laughs> case as well 
if I've got a client who has never been in good shape, yeah. has a, too much body fat, doesn't have much muscle mass, yeah. that person needs to be consistent, oh, yeah. consistent for a long time to get in a place yeah. where they can enjoy those foods without having the repercussions yeah. because a pizza, a cheap meal pizza to a client is who's who's overweight and looking to get into yeah. shape for the first time is probably the thing that is going to make them fuck it up because yeah. uh, that was the thing that got them overweight yeah. and they, they there's, there's a reason why they're overweight yeah. and that pizza brings enjoyment Aye. and feelings and uh, that's probably going to lead on to other things yeah. as well and that's oh, the, right. I think that's a big problem because people are like I I eat probably more junk food than what people would maybe think I do yeah. but I'm not going to post that over social media because yeah. people following me yeah. can't do like, can't live the way I live because yeah. if I, when I'm training for triathlon I can eat four or five thousand calories oh, some days and I easy. still won't put on weight because yeah. I'm burning uh, all burning those calories stupid amounts, so uh, a somebody who's following me who works an office job sitting down all day yeah. ain't going to be able to eat what I eat and get away with it so that's why there's so there's so much confusion Aye. in with people but that's why even even the simplest that like you mentioned office jobs and sitting down and eating even the simplest thing I see of people when you know they're going to an office job and there they are swigging like a fucking a can of monster or fucking something and it's not even like the reduced calorie like one. a full calorie one I so I think you're just You've just gubbed about 40 grams of sugar. He what? Sit in front of a desk? Or a frappuccino or something for Aye. Starbucks. Like, like 500 calories. Why do you need that? He sat in a desk. I don't get that. And then an hour later, how's that come down going to be? That's, it's just strange. That to me. Like, but that's it. We live also now in a, we're in a place where somebody might drive to work. Somebody might sit down for literally yeah. eight hours. That person could also drive home. Yeah. That person could then sit on the couch and order a Domino's to their house without even moving. Yeah. Eat that pizza, sit on the couch, then go to bed. Yeah. So that person, never mind their <laughs> breakfast, lunch, snacks, yeah. coffees, drinks, has taken in four to five thousand calories Aye. and burned less Aye. than two thousand. Yeah. Aye. That is double a calorie intake to what they've eaten, to what they've burned. Yeah. But it's so easily done. It's <laughs> fucking too easy. No, well that is, it it's is far too easy. Mm-hmm. Enjoying the podcast so far? Yeah. Good. Definitely. Uh, okay, so I'm going to uh, ask you a question here, man. Uh, if, you get, if you don't want to talk about it or it's too <laughs> upsetting or whatever, man. Then I can you fucking just, can see it already. You just let me know. Uh, but recently, obviously, you've had a bit of a shit time. Yeah. We, you were in obviously a relationship and that ended and it was a long, quite a long term relationship Mm -hmm. and also your dad passed away. So I think when things get really fucking hard for people, it's very easy to, I don't know, just go into self-destruct or, you know, literally say, fuck this and like, yeah no you know things you know you should do you probably yeah. don't want to do or don't do and go down a path of um it's only going to make things worse yeah so definitely. you said earlier at the start of the podcast that you recently get back into a fucking bit of proper training yeah and obviously i think that ties up with what's happened so how is that basically what's helped you deal with everything a lot yeah well, i mean obviously when i was in my relationship i was still I mean, I was still in the gym four times a week, but I mean, if I was taking days off, I took a day off. It was no big deal if there was other plans. And then just kind of blindsided me out of nowhere. It was just kind of a relationship finished. And so I was dealing with that and just like, you know, that way you see it, say, like, oh, fuck, I said, don't want to be around anyone or oh, fuck going to the gym or that or just want to be myself. And I kind of, I, th- I think I had it for you. everybody. I didn't really let anyone know or that. I just kind of went about my business and yeah, I went to the gym and it's again one of those things. Just walking out thinking, oh, thank fuck, I actually done that. I fucking, I needed that. And then after the relationship, like a week later, I got a call to say basically my dad was fucking on his deathbed and me, and my dad, I don't know. 
there was really no relationship there. I'd only ever seen him for six months or something in my life. And he, yeah, he was a chronic alcoholic, to put it bluntly. And yeah, that killed him in the end up. And I ended up, that was the Monday I got the call. And I ended up, I mean, we hadn't spoken, God, 17 years or something. So I ended up going to the hospital and making my peace and, you know, just fucking doing what I thought was right. Yep. And that helped me massively at the time. And then I think I just went straight back. In the, that was a Monday he passed. I just went straight back to work on a Tuesday and just, again, went about my business. Kind of didn't really, if anybody kind of clicked on then, yeah, yeah I said I didn't, but I never out my way to fucking let anyone know that I was just get fucking dumped and then that happened. It must have been struggling, mate. Oh, 100%, like definitely. It's like, because at one point I'm dealing with just losing the person I thought I was spending the rest of my life with to fucking then being myself and then next minute I'm now dealing with my dad so it's like boom welcome to fucking fuck town <laughs> and my mind was just I think I didn't have enough time to deal with what had happened with my relationship to then my dad so I think it was all my brain was just all over the place to my dad got buried a week later on the Monday and don't get me wrong, the person I was in a relationship offered to like help out and you know make sure I was all right and that but that was kind of, I didn't really see the point, if, you know if I couldn't deal with this myself then yep. who am I going to rely on the next time. So yeah that happened and I'd been kind of flirting with the idea of going back to Getting back into training to compete in powerlifting and I don't know, just those two signs. Just I don't know, just and there was another there's a lifter I used to lift with. He comes from England and he'd bought a a squat suit and it he was putting up these videos and they were fucking ridiculous, like the the squats were just stupid and he got it really cheap. I think the, I just, uh, I messaged him and said, we just spoke about it and I said, oh fuck it, I'm going to look on eBay. And there was the suit, my weight class, my size, and this suit's like worth £320 and it was reduced to 100 quid. I messaged the guy, he's like, I've barely used this suit, it's like brand new. And I just said, fuck it. I said, fucking, I'll send you that money, PayPal, send me the suit. And then just, Guys started kind of clicking on, like, you going to, you coming back in, are you powerlifting again, are you training or what, again with us, and I don't know, I just, you know, but you just, I slowly edge back in. Yep. I think it just, it work, I sit, and it's just me in the road, and I've been driving that long now, I don't even, I'm not even focusing, like, my mind is just wandering, so it's a sh pretty shitty job to be doing when all you've got all day to do is think. Fucking right. And so I started kind of training again with the guys that I've all, I'd trained with for years. And just for those two hours, like it wasn't till I was driving home, I'd be going down to Joe Cadway. And I'd fucking remember that I had an ex, like I'd just got a relationship <laughs> or my dad had just died. Like fuck, you forget it even happened. Cause for those two hours, it's just, it's, Mentally, you're free and you're you're dealing. It's not you're not you're not dealing with it, but you're. I don't know. It's it's a, just a crazy thing. To, can I explain? I put a post up about it, about what being back with that crew of guys training has done for me, like mentally, physically, and it's just it's made me feel so accountable again and just just have such a focus and take my mind off, you know, the problems that I'm probably in my mind and 
the release I'm getting in the gym, you know, just for those two or three hours, you're just switching off and you're getting shit done. And aye, it's been, it's been fucking really, really good, to be honest. It's, it's amazing, man. It's, don't get me wrong, I still have my days where you think, oh, fuck, fuck, I've thought too much about that. But those are the days where I probably went to the gym and I probably put more in. Yep. And I'm getting a lot more out. And I think, I can't even remember how I described it. I described the gym as like my little circus. Like, that's my that's my circus, my time yep. to be insane, my, my little time to enjoy my life. And I absolutely, I just I reminded me why I live for that sport. And yeah, it's fucking worked wonders the past few weeks, which is great. That's amazing, man. You know, it can't be fucking easy and it would be very easy to oh. do something that was less physically challenging or oh, I could fucking... I mean, I've done it. I mean, I had my days around home and I sat in the, I mean, I think one weekend I moved from the couch to my bed, back to the couch to my bed. And I never even watched it. Like, I never watched TV. I watched the odd YouTube video or something. But... I just used to wake up on a Monday and be back at work and I'm like, I've done nothing. Like, I've just moped around, done fuck all. Whereas now, Friday, I finish work on a Friday. Saturday, I'll chill out. If anything's going down, I'll make plans. If not, Sunday, I get my shopping in again, get all my food in. I get up to the gym, train like fuck. Fucking have a great time, just forget about everything. Just so you step in that door, yep. that's cool. you. Then home, have a good fucking meal, and then that's you. You're fucking ready to go for another week. It's amazing, man. It's just it's, it's fucking therapy. The word you said earlier, man. Like yeah. I probably mentioned this every fucking opportunity because I'm fucking raging about it. But somebody <laughs> stole my bike the other day, man, and like <laughs> the, I was I've been fucking gutted, man. Like really gutted, but. Um, it was Wednesday, and uh, I was so I was so down, like so yeah. much money wasted. Trainings, triathlon trainings, a bit mm. fucked at the moment and stuff. But um, I went to the gym. I put on a, a band called Periphery, so quite heavy, yeah. heavy music, and I done squats, heavy, and I then done. I was telling you I'd no deadlifted needs. Yeah. I've done deadlifts for the first time. Uh, worked down to worked up to. 150, which for me is a pretty fucking serious weight, mate. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but because that all. was a couple of months. But man, I was I felt fucking brilliant. Like, see, just like listening to those that music. I was I was just cutting about the gym, playing the air drums and banging yeah. my head. I don't oh. give a fuck. People looking at me thinking I'm an idiot, but because I'm so in that moment and so happy that yeah. I've got that feeling of like this is just right. amazing and it just made me feel so much better and I was like you know what fuck it it's a bike I'll deal yeah. with this you oh know I mean? You've um, but if I didn't train I, I could have easily just um, uh, not went uh, or done maybe a light a wee lighter session or yeah. something but I went no fuck this I'm I'm going for it and just what a difference yeah. <laughs> it was just amazing I just think even for people like when stuff like that happens even if it's not the gym if even just general life, if you've not got somewhere you can escape to that takes your mind off things, yep. like the, the monotony and the boredom of fucking general life or your job or not where you want to be, if you've not got escape to another kind of dimension in your mind, then you fucking, you're going to end up, you're going to end up in a fucking yeah. serious depression. Or but that's the thing for a lot of people and for me, previously it was the pub because yeah. it was like you know what getting steaming will make me feel better yeah. because I'm, I'm gonna have a laugh yeah. but my god like it, it just made me feel worse and i'm sure yeah. you've been there where you've made yourself oh, yeah. feel worse oh definitely um you know it's not i know i bang on about it a lot but it's just because i'm so i so passionately believe that it's yeah. it's not a good thing for bad times <sighs> it's no one no one has ever, like... like a couple of sociable drinks with a pal catching yeah. up to make yourself feel better. Different story. I'm talking about you know, yeah. getting messed up. You know, no one's never done well from not having consistency in their life. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? If you've got a, g 
good diet or you're fucking taking care of yourself, you're training, you're, you're being just generally all around more healthy, I mean, that's never going to be bad for you. Never. And I think we do. We all tend to all think, right, I'm a bit fucking down today. I'll just, just go home and chill or just do nothing. But that's a time where you should be more kind of active and proactive on getting yourself out. And totally. Even like you say, if you're going out, just get in contact with friends, go out for a cut of just a sociable it could drink. It be simple as walking, man. Yeah. It's, that's, for people especially that want to lose weight and feel better, I think, you know, I think they do think, oh, it's diet, if I just hang my diet, but that will help you so far. You do need to move more. You need to move more in your life. That's but, but that's going to, but that's going to help with your fat loss or your weight yeah. loss, but, but for your state of mind, your mental yeah. health and mindset. There's, for me, I've, I've, I've been in a period of my life where I do, I didn't train, and mm -hmm. I was, you know, lazier. And um, I'm now in a period of my life where the training is there, and just the difference between um, trying to feel a bit better about yeah. stuff. Yeah. From I'll go, you know, I'll just watch a, I'll watch a. a filming night or whatever to mm -hmm. not maybe not the gym yeah. maybe a walk or yeah. a walk with somebody a cycle uh, yeah. you know cycling and out about in the bike or a bit of cardio <laughs> you know in the yeah. gym it doesn't have to be trying to be a power lifter or a bodybuilder yeah. like it doesn't have to be the extreme it's just like exercise in general with music if you're a music yeah. person podcast um an audio book youtube on your phone like yeah. if i I think it's um it's just a, I don't know man like it's ten, it tends to always be a really positive thing for most uh, for everybody. Oh definitely, I've never like I say you you'll never meet anyone that's changed their diet and started being more active in their life that could say you I you know what. This is this is fucked me up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're never ever going to meet that person. Yeah. And if you do, then I'll fucking eat my own ass. <laughs> but it's. So what's your, what would be your biggest bit of advice for somebody who's thinking, you know what? I'm going to fucking make a change. I'm finally going to lose weight, or I'm finally going to try powerlifting out. What somebody who's basically new at all? What would your biggest cut a bit of advice to be to go to say make sure you don't do that or make sure you do do that just make sure you're you're going to the right educated people do you know what i'm saying yeah. whereas like i remember a few weeks ago you'd text me saying like this guy's approached me for like a strength training program but that's that's not my i'm yeah. not really i can't cater to him i don't really know if he'd pass andy's email yeah. on to me which is rare in my opinion because i've seen pts like down dumbarton and are teaching people powerlifting or bodybuilding like giving them nutrition plans and you're seeing it and you're like whoa really <laughs> and i'm watching them squat and i'm like what the fuck is this this guy he's never these people have never spent time under a bar or in competition and i've got no right to be training people yeah and these people are it's beginners. They're, in my opinion, they, they become victims. They're actually their their wallets are getting raped. <laughs> in my opinion, these guys are thinking, "Fucking, they're just seeing the money signs, thinking, ah, fuck it, what the fuck do they know?" And they're just these people are that clueless. They don't know what they're whether they're yeah, doing yeah. it right or not. And yeah, just that advice. Just make sure you approach someone that knows Aye. and someone that you've heard or ask around Aye. and it's got to be some sort of evidence that they know what they're doing or like results yeah basically, obviously and pts and like commercial gyms and stuff these guys are just they're just after the paycheck they're not there for any other reason in my opinion these guys yeah i watch i've watched a lot of them when i've been in commercial gyms and it's like what what, what are you even doing like you're not putting any effort and even helping that person or you're just there passing the time 
and you're seeing them teaching squats or deadlifts, and you're like, whoa, that person's just going to say bye-bye to their spine in a few weeks. Yeah. Uh, so, like, the gym, it has to be, if you're going to want to get any kind of bodybuilding, powerlifting, or kind of train yourself for strength, you do need to get a really specific gym, a gym that is kitted out. Totally, I mean, man. I mean, I know there's probably a, a ton of CrossFit gyms up here now, which... I mean, I'm not condoning CrossFit in any way, and but I'm sure there's people in there that could teach you yeah. the basic compound movements, and that's all you. That's to start off. That's all you need to know. You need to learn how to squat right, deadlift right, and bench or press right, and that right there will change anyone's composition big time. So definitely the the gym, the gym choice in my opinion yeah, is the biggest thing. Definitely. definitely. Like, I mean, you, if you go to Outcast Barbell, you've got, I think there's the best part of 50 to 60 grand worth of bars in there. Yeah. So you've got power bars, deadlift bars, squat bars, fucking you've got ladies bars, safety squat bars, hex bars, fucking football bars, you name it, fat bars, there's everything there. Yeah. And then the best thing about like Outcast Barbell and gyms that do cater to like bodybuilders or powerlifters you, sh you shouldn't be scared to approach these people because they're probably n the nicest people yeah totally. even though they're fucking jacked up to the fucking hill probably sweating maybe blood pouring out their fucking nose if you want some advice there's always somebody that's willing to give it to you yeah totally and i mean i'll always i mean i <laughs> i don't always approach people because I'm, I'm socially awkward but when I see people doing stuff wrong, you know, I do it a lot of time, don't say, look, I can sort this and that, and little technical things can be fixed in, like, two minutes, they can be fixed so quick, but that's what I think people forget, they just jump in and they think they're doing it right, when really, they're just going to end up hurting themselves, or... Definitely, man, I think fucking, if somebody wants to be awesome at something and get awesome results yeah. you need to get professional advice if uh -huh. you if you don't know what you're doing yeah because it's something as serious as powerlifting strength oh, yeah. you could fucking hurt yourself yeah. like seriously um or if it's like diet you could you know you could be trying you could be literally knocking your pan in yeah. the gym oh, and not eating right and never getting where you want to be there was one guy that competed at the, one of the bodybuilding shows at the start of the year he trained at minecraft and I mean, he paid this guy for a nutrition plan, and I think like six weeks out, I mean, he looked brilliant six weeks out, and then he said from then on, there's, it actually, I think the photo went viral, there was like, he's before and after, and he's after, he looks like a little African kid that's lost every bit of weight, and apparently his coach pulled like all carbs, everything, all he wanted to meet him was just protein, and this guy looked absolutely fucking horrific, and you're thinking... You, you've paid someone for that and this guy's got no clue what he's doing so uh, the best thing you can do is was either if you're going to get into a PT or a strength coach or something research them find out about them and make sure you're giving your money to the right fucking person but also be prepared to give your money as well because yeah. like it's you know it's not the cheapest thing in the world no. getting a coach but if there's something that you should be willing to invest in it's yeah. your, your fucking your health or yeah. your body or and i think whatever well, because it could be literally is it, is it would be a case of no buying a new pair of trainers that month yeah. you know that could be that could be your yeah. coaching for the month because yeah. people will pay a hundred odd pound for shoes oh, no bother but yeah. when it comes to actually looking after their, their own body then not yeah. some people aren't so prepared to to pay that yeah and i think as well now with the kind of social media world we live in if you search instagram or facebook there's going to be someone putting up free content to kind of get you started to kind of show you the basics yeah. of what's going to happen because i mean the, it's the biggest downfall i see with lifters now that are just kind of starting powerlifting or whatever else again i sound back to the sounding old as fuck when i started like i said there was no facebook there was no interaction with all these guys from yeah. america or these big british lifters or uh, bodybuilders but now everybody's seeing all these people and they're taking little bits of 
how they lift and what they do and try to put it onto themselves and try to lift like that person. But that's not how it goes. That person lifts that way for them. Yeah. You're not them. You need to find your own way and perfect it, be consistent with it, and be prepared to put in the hard work for it. And that's, I like... It's not easy, but it's it worth it. It takes the time. Just, I think... Patience. Follow, follow, if you're going to get any powerlifting and such, follow these guys and enjoy the fucking crazy things that happens in powerlifting now, but find who you are as a lifter and fucking make a platform your bitch in your own way. Don't fucking copy people or try to do what other people are doing because you're just going to end up in fucking a serious injury or yeah. just hitting a plateau and your training will go fucking nowhere. Yeah, I like it, man. I like it. Last bit, buddy. Plans for the future. What's happening? Or are you just taking it as it comes? Or have you got anything in your mind that you know you're going to go for? Oh, well, I'll probably... All going well if my body holds up during this kind of transition period where I go back into powerlifting. Then I'll probably compete next year around, I don't know, April time maybe. Nice. That'll be a qualifier, a Scottish qualifier for the GPC, I believe. That's the federation that everybody seems to be going to. So you're talking, I mean, I used to go to competitions and it was like three day events, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but these things have, there's that much people power lifting now or getting any lifting. You know, these events are becoming week long, six, seven day events. Yeah, yeah. We like seven, 800 lifters, which is, brilliant because you know you're then you've got nowhere to hide you're competing against the best yep. and if you've not put all all your effort in then you're going to get found out and aye it's something to look forward to definitely for sure. are you going to be doing all three or aye. just just I'll squat full pillar. Or all of it? I ain't no one trick pony man I'm full pillar you'll need to get that shoulder looked at then eh yeah <laughs> get some maintenance on that shit I'm going to get it <laughs> Get it cupped, massaged, fucking pounded. You name it, it's all happening. Fucking getting about that uh, mobility. <laughs> I've got a, a lacrosse ball, floss, foam roller, bands. Uh, I've got everything, man. So it's just making it actually happen. That's it. Force the boring stuff. Fo force myself to do recovery. Definitely, man. Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about, man, before we sign off for the night? Yeah. And you want to add? And you want to ask me? I don't know, man. Definitely, I've not ranted as much as I thought I would. You know, no? me, you know me in my rants. Probably a good thing, mate. Yeah, probably. Cause people would just come off thinking he's a fucking prick, or he's <laughs> even more, he's even more a, more of a prick than I thought he was. Uh, no, it's just it's it's good to see you now from what you were. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, appreciate that, man. And I still think, like obviously I mentioned, but I still remember when you came to me. I mean, I think I was I was with Jenny at the time. I think we were living in the bridge apartments, and you were yeah. across the road. Yeah. And we were like, ah. Oh. I mean, before that, it was, oh, do you want to be up at the fucking the Witherspoons? <laughs> fucking, we'll get pissed. Rums like on a Thursday. Aye, I don't bother. Whereas then it was fucking, like, any chance you can take me along to the gym now, man, if you're free. And I still remember, I mean, even that first time you squatted and that, it was fucking, I was looking at it, this cunt's been doing this behind my back, this seems alright, your form is good and, you know, but then I think, not that, not, not that I should tell you, but I mean, I did, I did doubt your, of course, your ability, like I thought, MD, it, MD who knew me would have, is he going to stick this, I mean, obviously, I'd hoped you would have, I could see you were serious about it, but, you know, I think everyone still had a thought of, you know what, is is he going to stick this? But to see what me thinking that then to now is, like, it's crazy. Even still, like, when I think, when you were saying, like, oh, I think I'm going to go part-time in the bank and can I start doing part-time PT? And I was like, it's fucking dodgy, man. <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. You've got a fucking full-time, you've got a wage here, man. You've got fucking good stability. And then I was like, go for it, man. Right, if that's what you want to do, go for it. And then you done it. 
And I was like, all right, it's working out, it's working out. And then you're like, I think I'm just going to leave the bank. <laughs> I'm going to become a full-time PT. Can I talk like that? <laughs> Some sort of mad sexual voice <laughs> all the time? And again, I'm just like, oh, fuck, man. That's fucking, that's like all your income. That's fucking, that's dangerous. That's risky. But but what did you it? say in the Kusas earlier? Huh? What did you say in the Kusas earlier? I don't know. You said life is short. You can't <laughs> fuck about, man. Uh, true. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's true though. It's pure cliche, yeah. but it's fucking true. Yeah. We both, we both fucking obviously found out in different ways of what can happen in that, yeah. and you just don't know. And it's, it is fucking scary how quick life can change. So yeah. you know. Well, that's it. It's you just got to do what makes I, you happy at the end of the day. Yeah, you're doing your thing, and just as well, I think for me, after what's happened, again, it's just that reminder: the gym's there, like yeah. always. And I think it's, it's Henry Rollins that says, like, friends will come and go, but 200 pounds will always be 200 pounds. Like, the, the iron never lies. And, yeah, just back in training like a motherfucker just changed the game for me again. Fucking got me through my darkest days, man. And that yeah. was, like, back when I couldn't lift, you know what I mean? I was just yeah. doing what I could, like, bicep curls and fucking All the good stuff. dumbbell flies and stuff like that. But at the same time, it was training and training... It's training and training makes you feel amazing yeah. and uh, getting stronger and getting l or getting leaner, whatever way is uh, a great is a, a great thing. Mm -hmm. I just do regret the first couple of years trying to get too lean because I just wish <laughs> I focused on getting a bit bigger. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to tell you, man, but you were on, you were doing your thing and it's all about aesthetics, man. Yeah. You know what I mean, at that for me at that point, that's yeah, all I, I really cared about. <laughs> I can at one point I really wanted to hold you down and. I've got to remember though, I was like fucking, I was overweight man for yeah, like I know, I eight know. years of my life and hated how I looked so the thought of putting on body fat scared the <laughs> shit out of me man. I know. But I know. definitely, um, that's me, triathlon's done so I'm not going to be back in full training mode for that till next year so yeah. let's get some uh, some good quality sessions in uh, at some points. Well last time you were in man, the fucking, get some, uh, one of your deadlift. You know, work on that do some awesome leg sessions because mm. uh i don't really get yeah i don't really get much opportunity to be able to push myself in a strength sense yeah like that so like obviously that's uh it's like a different different uh, way of training for me way. but i do love it man it is awesome yeah. it is great it's to me powerlifting just uh, lifting heavy trumps bodybuilding every time like yeah, that's fine but everybody just remember <laughs> that <laughs> getting the low body fat levels is really good for your health so yeah. <laughs> but i know thanks very much mate this has been awesome it's another long one but mm. you know what people better listen yeah or i will not be happy but i know it'll be a good listen for folk man it's a bit different because obviously you're more um stevie was weight loss yeah ibrahim was training john was more about alcohol mm -hmm. so this is again another different one it's been cool and if your clients i mean if any time i mean if you, you want to get a fucking crew of clients you're always welcome at outcast and you can fucking come in and see what the real fucking strength game they are fucking very scared of that place even just from oh they'd love it videos man but i guarantee no they would love it man that fucking probably three or four of them would end up wanting to fucking compete. Especially women. Women are just obsessing over powerlifting these days. Yeah, man. And yeah. Anytime you want me to come up and fucking critique all your goddamn forms. Like that, man. Then I will. It's a good shout. So strength, be strength, prepared, night guys. With, strength night with Dugas. That's it, man. Sounds good to me. Featuring me. <laughs> need, to, need to sort me out first, but... <laughs> Mate, put it there. Thanks very much. Don't mention it, man. Cheers, man. Have a good one.